What's going on, my friends? Welcome back to the Florida series. We're in Key Largo. My dad is suiting up whew, to do some lobster hunting. Ladies and gentlemen, look how rough it is out here. But we have braved the elements. Whoa. <laughs> and we are the only ones on this very popular snorkeling reef. It's also a little cold, which is why I have the wetsuit on. Um, so we're the only ones out here. We are going to snorkel for lobster in this gorgeous water. Let's see what we can find. My let my dad is the master lobster hunter. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> Expectations are high now. <laughs> Woo! Oh man, it's kind of fun being the only ones out here. It's just us and uh, deep sea fishermen. They're out there on the ledge. Right away, we started finding lobster. In fact, this was the only place we anchored all day and we just searched around these rocks. Uh, we measured this one. He was a keeper, so we were one for one so far. My dad left me hanging there. There were jellyfish all over this spot. That's also why there weren't people out there. Look at that kind of cool ribbon jellyfish. They were everywhere and when we first dropped in, I thought we had to get out. But I dropped right in the middle of a bunch of them and I wasn't getting stung. So they were a non-stinging jellyfish. Or if they were stinging us, we didn't feel it. Like there was you know, some jellyfish just don't have any power uh, in their sting for a human. So we kept swimming around, kept searching under all the rocks. Um, not every rock had a lobster under it. Some had fish, like that little guy. Um, but I saw the antennae sticking out of a lobster in this little cave. This was the first attempt. I went in and tickled him out. And I'm not very good at this like my dad is, but I tickled him out and got him on the first try. And it was a nice one. That was so cool. That was, that was a little bit of a, an accomplishment there for me. And we dropped him in. It was another keeper. So we were two for two on the day. You can see how many jellyfish there were out there at some spots, just tons of them. And like I say, we were out there for like two hours swimming around and not a single sting from either one of us, but it kind of looked intimidating. Uh, it looked actually a little creepy <laughs> while we were out there at first, but then after a while we didn't even notice it. So I swim down to this big rock here and I look in and I'm like, are you kidding me? I saw several lobster under this one rock and it had some nice big entrances to it. In fact, some of the rocks that you swim down to, th there's no way to get the lobster out because they're just way back in the corner, but this had two entrances so you could poke them out one side. So you see I'm waiting on the other side. There you go. He pops out and grabbed it and said, antenna. But then he went back in through the back door. Uh, so my dad swam down to try to get him. It was a nice little cave back there, but it wasn't a big cave, so it was fairly easy to tickle him out of this one. You see, my dad's a little sneaky about it. Chases him out and grabs him. A nice size one, too. My dad can hold his breath for way longer than I can as well. I need to practice. He practices in a pool, actually, guys. He swims a lot. He loves practicing holding his breath, and that's why he's a little bit more advanced than me, even though I'm the young gun. So we were three for three on the lobster. In fact, that one, we ended up measuring, but we didn't have to measure. We could just tell by eyeballing him that it was a keeper. And I noticed something. I swam down right by that same rock. Okay, we were getting our breath, and I was like, wait, do I see an antenna sticking out? And sure enough, there's one tucked back under that little rock. He was kind of protected by the little sea urchin, so I had to be careful poking him out. But he was off to the side. I just saw the tip of an antenna sticking out. Fortunately, the water was so clear. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even looked under that one. 
and you can see him pop out there, and I miss him, but he goes under the big rock with the other lobster. So we now had three in that one cave. So we're like, you know what, we're just gonna plant ourselves here and just keep swimming down till we get these lobster out. Look how big that one is. And he gave my dad the slip, went out the front door and ran around the house and <laughs> went in through the back door. So after a little rest, me ancient gets right back at it. He's after that big lobster. There were three back there, but we really wanted that big one. And he got him. This was the biggest lobster we'd ever caught in Florida up to this point. Wow! That's a big wow. lobster. <laughs> I tell you what, folks, this is one of the more fun things we've ever done coming to Florida and, and lobster hunt. And uh, it was cool being out there all by ourselves, too, because normally there, there are quite a few people around. But on a rough day like that, um, people just don't get out. But the water was super clear, a lot of cool fish. So we had another little rest, and we got back after the other two that were there. We weren't sure if these ones were keepers or not. But he chased them out and <laughs> went right back in. They were tricky. And then while we weren't looking, one of them took off. He's like, I'm out of here. This is not a safe place to be. So we went after him and just grabbed him. And it was the one that I had tried to capture earlier. Because you can see I, I pulled an antenna off of him. And so he tried to escape. And we measured him. And he was just barely a keeper. So every single lobster we caught this time was a keeper, unlike previous times where we've seen a lot of small ones. So we really hit upon a really, really nice spot here. So there was one more under there. My dad chases him out. And this time he tries to do the whole, whole uh, going out the front door and running back in through the back. But my dad was ready for it. And he tried to flee to another rock. And fortunately at this place there weren't that many big coral heads. So he didn't have that many options. This is one of those areas where the hurricanes really destroy a lot of the coral. And it's kind of a coral boneyard at this spot. We got all of them from under that cave. Oh, that was a good find. Oh. Measured him too. And he was a keeper as well. Look at that fish swimming around in the back there. Not sure what that was. But every single lobster we found under that cave was a keeper. We went four for four in one spot, in one cave. And then my dad finds this huge conch shell, or conch shell, depending on where you're from. And that was a cool bonus find. This thing was almost in perfect condition and didn't have any creature in it. So it was overall a very, very successful outing. All right, guys, we are back at the marina. Boy, you catch a few lobster, and suddenly everybody wants to be your friend. Got a big heron here. That is a big bird. I love herons. I think they are so cool. Anyway, well, I always <laughs> have to watch them because we got a pelican over here. All the birds showed up as soon as I broke out the lobster. So I've never cleaned a lobster uh, in this way. So normally what most people do is they just grab it and they like twist the tail off. But this guy in a YouTube video showed how you get way more meat if you took a knife. I'm going to insert it into the side of the shell. I'm going to break. I think I did that right. There we go. I break a little like hard spot in the shell between the last leg and the carapace there and then I hold the tail down and I lift up on the carapace there is it gonna work it is the head just peeled away and he said there's a membrane on the bottom here break that with your fingers and then he said Pull the lobster meat up. There we go. I did it. Just like he did. Cool. So look at the, look at look how much more meat I have there by doing it that way. And then I just pull off the guts. The last step he said take your knife, put it right between like the eyes there. There's two dots. 
but don't cut all the way. And then I turn it around, I flip it over like that, and I grab the vein out. There it is, there's the vein. Look at that. Pull that out, and I've got a cleaned lobster tail and all of that meat on the end right there. That is cool. All right, let's clean this big one. Oh, that is so cool, that big lobster. I already this the same way. There's a little spot, last leg, he said between the last leg, there's a spot right there and I can feel it with my knife. He said, cut that. So I cut that, hold tail down, lift up on, lift up on lobster, flip it over, break membrane with fingers. Oh wow, that's a, <laughs> that's a thicker membrane on this bigger lobster. There. And then pull right out. Look at that. I left all the guts in there. I got this big, beautiful lobster tail. You see the two dots right there? The knife right between the, betwixt the eyes. And then I push down. There we go. Don't cut it all the way. There is the vein. The poop vein came right out. There we go, folks. And there we have two <laughs> clean lobster tails. This is so fun. I love doing new things like this. And I guess I just throw this head out. I got all the head meat. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna do something that may be unorthodox, but I like trying new things. So I'm going to keep these legs. We're gonna grill these legs too and see how they turn out. Cause these are some pretty thick ones. They can, there's definitely some tubes of of meat in there, but that's uh, that's dinner. All right, we're uh, at the pool area at this resort. I'm kind of sneaking around the back way here. If we come all the way to the back, they have a little grill hidden right here. I just discovered this the other day, didn't even see it. And uh, oh, that looks nice, real nice. <laughs> Nobody's in the pool right now because it got quite chilly. Turned out to be quite chilly today. Let's see if this works. Sometimes these grills in the salt water. Oh, starts right, oh, just like a dream. Just like that. So I've got it hovering right at 300 degrees. Um, it's funny, when you try to read about how to cook something online, everybody has their own opinion. I heard everything from cook it to 15 minutes to cook it to 8 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep an eye on it. But I'm going to set it on there and then I'm going to kind of split it apart like so. And then I'm going to take some butter. This is what one... I'm just going off of... I've never done any of this before. So I'm just going off of YouTube videos and blog posts. Put some butter right in there. And then... I probably should have put salt and pepper in there first. But everybody said just use a little salt and pepper. It's, it's amazing on it. So I'm just gonna put some salt and pepper down in there. Same thing for the big one. <laughs> you know, on the smaller one, I am gonna put some of my first cast seasoning on it. I was about to put on the big one, but I thought in case it does, my first cast seasoning doesn't go well on lobster, I'm not gonna ruin the big one. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, hello, I forgot. I forgot the spider legs. I think I'm just gonna throw these on like, you know, these will probably cook really fast, so I'm gonna throw them up on the upper rack there. Just like, there we go, just like that. Okay, sweet, we got lobster on the grill, on the bobby. Excellent. You know what I'm gonna do? Let's take some butter, and I'm gonna just stick it right on the plate there. Maybe a little more, just like so. And then I'm going to set this right on top of the grill so the plate gets warm and it'll melt that butter. While we're waiting for the lobster to cook, let's do another giveaway, guys. I'm really enjoying doing these. Um, let's do a bottle of first cast seasoning. You never know, I might make it a double pack. In fact, I might make it a double pack. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is just comment below this video. Make sure you like the video too, but definitely comment below it. And I'll pick somebody randomly from the comment section. So make sure you comment below. Win a bottle of first cast seasoning. It is amazing, delicious nutritious i use it even when i'm not making a video so the ancients come in and the butter is melted oh my i melted the butter on the oh yes, right plate on and uh oh my 
goodness. Is our grilled that? lobster. It's just about done. It looks like it's. Oh you know what? I don't see any translucence in there. It's done. I don't know about the big one. I think the big one is done too. Is myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see. Look at that. It's white, all, white the all the way through. Nice. Sizzling and popping. All right. Uh, say a prayer real quick. Thank you so much, Father in Heaven, for the bounty of the ocean and the fact that we were able to grab it. And I uh, just ask you to bless it to our bodies now. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Look at that meat. Just nice. Okay. Boom. All right, guys, that's pulling away. Look so the that. tail is fine. Oh, man. A hot piece of lobster. All right. Good. And I'll dig my own out you from the other side. Own? Okay. All right. Oh. You want to dip? Now, there is some yeah, melted butter just, if you want to. Oh. Now, compare it, please, to boiled lobster, so we know if, like, boiled is better or this way is better. The meat is, is more tender this way. Really? Yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, oh yeah, it's not as chewy, 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 you know, kind of, uh, hmm. let me get the, from the other end here, just to see. Because we want to know, like, should we grill them from now on, or do we boil them, or are they kind of equal? The texture's different on this one, roasted like this, it's than the softer, other ones. It, it? It, it's softer. It's hmm. softer, um, but maybe it's because I'm used to it. I kind of like the other way better, I mm. think. But I'm, I think because it, it's saltier or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is the little tail of my first cast seasoning on. I'm gonna see if my first cast seasoning is good uh, on lobster. Ooh, that is warm. It's warmish, hey. All right. The little monster. <laughs> Yeah, the, it's the one thing that's nice about boiling, a real uh, pro to boiling, is that the meat pulls away from the shell, so. What do you think? Is it, is, does it seem more uh, flaky or whatever you want to yeah, call it? Yeah, it's not as um, rubbery. Right, right. It's not as rubbery when you grill it. My first cast season, I've got to be honest, guys, doesn't belong on lobster. The lobster's already flavorful enough, and it's sweet. And my seasoning's a little like on the spicy cayenne pepper side. So um, that didn't improve it. If I do it all over again, I would not add my first cast season to lobster. Interesting. So mm -hmm. No good on, oh, I mean, it's fine. It's perfectly edible. It's lobster. It's lobster. <laughs> <laughs> but don't put my seasoning on lobster. I cannot believe this, that we're eating I, I, I know. fresh lobster. Hmm. Definitely, it's um, it's softer when you yeah. boil it. It makes it a little rubbery, right. you know. Right, it, it's so. more like octopus texture when you boil it. Uh huh. But when you roast it, it's it's tender. Yes, yes, exactly. Cool. What's going on, my friends? Welcome back to the Florida series. About to go fishing with me, ancient. Here is our rental boat. Here is the day. It's a little stormy out today. A little not stormy. It's windy though. Kind of blustery. But uh, when you have a boat rental, you don't waste any of the days. So we are headed out, fair wind or foul. Check this out here, folks. We have here some, well, you can't really see them, cigar minnows in there. We'll show you those up close in a second. You want to start up the live well pumps? Guys, it is a fine day for fishing when you've got cigar minnows. Or by the steering wheel. Oh, steering wheel. Yeah, it's oh. the one. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Aha! The boat rental comes with this sweet little live well. Oops, got the chum bag in there. That's not good. All right, there we are, guys. So, check this out. This is called a cigar minnow. And uh, the other day, we caught some of these on sabiki rigs. And these are really good bait, I've heard. And then here's the head of one. Somehow, they tore their companion apart in there. He was injured. This guy was a little bit injured. Look at it, they just shredded him. Poor fellow. Anyway, we got cigar minnows, which is a little bit of a rare thing unless you want to pay top dollar for them at the tackle store. So we're kind of excited to use these. We'll see if we can catch anything on them. We've, we've been out there uh, chumming, I mean, a half a dozen, dozen times. Never seen those minnows. I mean, when they came up, they were so different and the way they acted was so uh -huh. different. Uh-huh, so. uh-huh. Guys, we're a little new to the Florida fishing. Spent a lot of time in, uh, in Hawaii, in the Hawaiian Islands, and only recently started visiting Florida. Uh, so all this is kind of new to us. We'll have to see what's kind of 
go down today. We're gonna try trolling a bucktail first thing. This is gonna be kind of one of those days where we just make it up as we go and we have no real plan. It's just go out, fish, and have fun. And on this big rod here, we're gonna troll on this great big hook. We're gonna troll um, one of those cigar minnows. Push us off. Oh, I'll push us off and we're away. All right, cool. I have here a cutting board and I have here a frozen ballyhoo. I'm just gonna cut him real quick. All right, so I have here a chunk of the ballyhoo and uh, we're just gonna tip the jig with that. And guys, if you're new to fishing, the reason why you tip an artificial bait with a little piece of live bait is to give it some smell. Make that artificial smell like a piece of, you know, or like a fish actually swimming. When a fish swims up behind it, considering whether or not to strike it, he smells the scent coming off and you'll have a lot better chance of getting him to bite. Look at that nice little spot there. That's cool. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I'll just start heading in that general direction, and we'll see. Uh... <laughs> Check this out, guys. I made my own double hook rig in case we had a short striker. There we go, guys. I know that uh, little redneck looking, but let's see if it gets the job done. That's what we're using, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if we can get a big one. Alright, stop it. Stop the motor. I'll reel this one up. Yes, please. Guys, we got oh we got one! On the cigar minnow, I can't oh, believe man. it. Oh man. Is it a good one? Uh, it feels actually kind of odd. It's not fighting real hard. <laughs> it's silver. It's cool because we're just making up this as we go, guys, trolling. And we. Oh no. What? Way. Are no you way. kidding? What? It's the biggest one I've ever seen. You got him on the back hook, too. How? How do you. Do lizard, lizard fish, fish swim? Lizard fish. What the heck? Wow. Guys, this is a trash fish. This wow. is just a, like, oh no, oh, can you grab him? Oh, oh, oh there he goes. Oh, oh shoot. I don't have, we don't have a net either. We only have one more piece of bait. Guys, a lizard fish is just like a dumb trash fish that lays on the bottom. How come? Mm -hmm. We're in like 15 feet of water. Like, how did it come all the way up from the bottom? and wow. bite a trolling bait. Now, one thing about these is that guys do use these for bait. Remember that guy that caught that big snook on one of these? Really? Oh, you know, maybe we throw them in a live one. Yeah, let's just throw them in a live one, see what, what happens. Weird. I, I mean, I would have oh, never, <laughs> wow, I would have never thought we would catch a lizard. Guys, these things lay on the bottom. That's why they're camouflaged on top. Wow. They bury themselves in the sand like a flounder. Well, that's disappointing. There we go, guys. Another, this is our last big piece of bait here. We were hoping for something, <laughs> a game fish of some sort. All right, Pops, put her back on the whatever speed we were at. There we go, guys. Well, one small victory is that the redneck double hook rig did work. All right, my friends, we are at a reef area now. In fact, you can see the reef, the dark reef down there. And, um, I'm gonna reel this in. We're gonna throw an anchor out and bottom fish now. All right, anchors away. <laughs> All right, my friends, I'm gonna take our last uh, cigar fish and just kind of toss them out there. Stick that in the rod holder. And I'm gonna grab out the chum. Look at that delicious chum block right there. Mm -mm. There you go, we'll get that started. 
guys, I got one on the uh, on the little on the little fish, the, the cigar fish, just drifting along the bottom. In fact, I was just about to reel it up just to check the bait, and something just took off. Yeah. Whoa, 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 we got something good here, guys. Isn't that always how, how it happens? When you aren't expecting it, something just takes off. We troll for like an hour, watching carefully the whole time. What is it? It's a shark. It's a shark. It's a little shark. What? Every time, <laughs> it's the second time, guys, we come out here catch sharks Jeez, wow this is, this is an angry <laughs> strong little shark look at that I'm gonna let him fight it's a little longer. good <laughs> grief little devil all right I'll try to keep him on the surface there you go there grab it all right just drop him in the bottom all right guys we got a shark Something different too than a, the nurse shark. Woo. I've caught a couple nurse sharks in Florida. This is the hey hey. Oh, I got that. Wow, fearsome little fellow. Hey, um, let me get the pliers here. Definitely the pliers probably for this dude. Right mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Here. What kind is he? Oh yeah, he's got. Some, that looks like a gray. I don't know. What do they call look at that? He just. Let's see here. Um. Oh man, he just he absolutely it swallowed it. Is this an Atlantic shark? He has a little bit of black. You know, I'll have to look it up. I think, guys, it's been a long time. Guys, we might have here. You know, let me look inside. We might have here a shark we can eat. There, there we go. Oh, nice job. Um, I guess we'll put him in the live well for now. Let uh, me, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I can look at him. Let's measure him real quick. So we know that part of it. So he is, in case it's a slot, he's about 30. 30, 31, 31, yep, 31 inches. Yep, there you go. 31 inch shark, all right. all right. We'll stick him in there. Make some room for him. All right, his little personal hot tub there. Okay. <laughs> My friends, it is an Atlantic shark nose and there is no size limit. And fishing game lets you keep one per day per person or two per vessel. So we're gonna be cooking a shark a little later. <laughs> stick around for that. Ooh, look at this bird hanging out right here, guys. That's a good sign. Hey, man, hang out as long as you want. Usually that means they can see bait fish in the water or something. You always want to fish around birds in the ocean, if you can. Not birds sitting in the ocean, but when you're fishing in the ocean, fish around where birds are. Uh, you know what I mean. Fish on! Whoa! My dad's, well look at that, look how it's, it's look how it's swimming. That's crazy. Got that cut bait on. Cut bait, got it done. Cut ballyhoo. Oh man, oh we got another good fish on. <laughs> or shark or creature or yeah, something. Who knows? who knows anymore. In the ocean, man. Oh, another shark. Another shark. Now it's my turn to do the honors. Yeah. Let me get a little, oh nice. He's, I think it's another, yeah, that is. That's another Atlantic sharp nose. Come here, buddy. Got him, got him. Whoa. Look at that, guys. Woo. All right, All right Pops, nice. A couple of sharks. Thank you. Yeah, they, you know, they said white dots on the side there sometimes. You there you go. You circle hook. Yeah, circle hooks. Ah. Look at those teeth, guys. Ooh, he's got some teeth. Stuff. Yeah, they do. I tell you, we are so we are rocking and rolling out here, guys. It is. It, that's why I stayed sitting down. I. <laughs> uh -huh. The waves are getting a little big. There we, we might... go. I don't think we need to keep another. We got plenty of eats in that. Okay. Look something. how he has like a mark. Wonder if another shark did that. Oh wow! Yeah, look at that. Huh? Interesting. Very cool. Oh, he's not happy. Oh, he look ain't. Those slit eyes. Uh huh. Looks like cat eyes. Well, my friends, we're gonna blow this pop stand and go uh, check out that bridge over there. Whilst we are going in, guys, I'm gonna throw out the bucktail again. Oh, there we go. Who knows what we could catch trolling. Oh, look, we 
got one. We got one. On the bucktail. On the bucktail. Oh my goodness. Did you bite it? I don't. I mean, he bit it hard. Yeah, he is. A, this is a decent fish. On a bucktail. Oh, this is so cool. Because this is. I mean, you two, we don't know what's going to happen. We gonna don't, don't know what's going to happen. Oh my word. Well, we got a mystery fish. It's a, it's a silver or pomp what? Or jack or something. Oh, it's a, it's a jack craval. Oh, Look at that. Look at that. That is so cool. <laughs> Just never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> there we go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. All right, we're just gonna let this guy go and uh, let him be caught by somebody else. Those things can get massive. They can get like 40, 50 pounds. All right, guys, we're at this like cool looking bridge. A big party group of party people going out to the sandbar that's out there. Check out this bridge. Ought to be something around here to catch, I'm thinking. It is going out fiercely. Yeah, just kind of right in front of their rocks there, maybe. Try it. All right, my friends. We're oh, look at this gorgeous, gorgeous Florida home right on the right on the water. We're going to fish in front of this and pretend like we live here for a little bit. There we go, my friends. That is so cool. Just gonna, I don't know, just fish here. We don't know what we're doing, so everything's fun. Oh, the shark is dead. That's interesting. Yeah, the shark is dead. I thought that hook was way down there. And uh, these guys die. Oh, he's he is twitching a little bit, but he's basically dead. These guys die pretty easy. It's a good thing that we kept him, because I would have hated to throw him back and he didn't, if he was, wasn't a keeper. All right, so me ancient is uh, going to go over the side. He's going to see if there are any lobster or anything like that under these rocks here. So, good luck. I wish me well. I'll keep an eye out for sharks. Guys, we do have a bit of a rainstorm coming here. So, I'll keep an eye on that. Oh, look, I'm getting a little bite on this. Um, one thing that we've noticed before though, at least this is freshwater fishing, sometimes something can really bite right before a big storm hits. All right, my friends, I'm gonna do something that's kind of ridiculous, but I mean, it's, this whole day has been ridiculous. What I'm gonna do is put on this whole lizard fish. Now this guy is really big. I caught a little lizard fish in the first ever Florida series that I did, and a guy caught a huge snook on it. And so what I'm going to do is put this guy on a hook and just see what happens. Why? It's just, I, I mean, this is just 60 pound braid, which is nice, but I mean, it's not that big and a 50 pound mono leader. So it's not a massive setup. I mean, it's pretty stout, but it ain't that massive, but who knows? Who knows? I caught a shark yesterday, a six foot shark on a whole ballyhoo. So kind of in the business of trying ridiculous things. I'll be right there. Oh, I'm back here. <laughs> nice one. Check. Oh. I'll check it. Yeah, check him to make sure. Okay, there we go. I, I measured it with this, it looked like he was good. All right. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I Guys, we got we tons of them under this rock ledge up here. Really? The concrete ledge, I should say. Oh, this is perfect. Guys, I let the live well drain because the shark died in the live well. The hook was way down there. I figured that might happen. These sharks are a little on the uh, delicate side as far as sharks go. Check it out. I cannot believe we have sharks and lobster since both of them are too big for this cooler. Just going to pour ice from this. Got some more ice here. I need a bag. You need the yellow bag. I yep. got a big crab in it. I don't want to try to grab it without having something wrong. <laughs> Was it like a stone crab or something? I don't know. I can't tell. 
This is for so fun, guys. We're just making this stuff up as we go. Did you get him? You got him. Because my dad got a big crab. A lobster. I scared a lobster out, and he came flying out of the rock. The lobster went under. Oh, wow. Well. You look at him. I gotta try to get the lobster. I don't even know what kind of crab. That, is that actual stone crab? I don't know. Wow. What on earth? Look at this dude. It's kind of a dirty crab. Oh, it's a female. You can tell by the bottom. That is a crazy looking little crab. Wow. Interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea what on earth this crazy little crab is. So I'm going to take... Hey, you. Whoa. Whoa. Alright, so I snapped a few pictures of him. And I'm going to post them to my YouTube channel. Ask you guys, because he's definitely not a stone crab. Stone crabs are like these chic, beautiful crabs. And that guy's a dirty little fellow. Alright, so shout out to Noah Farley for telling me what that crab is. It's a spider crab. He said in the comment section, I just looked at images for spider crabs, and sure enough, that's what it is. So, now I gotta look at the regulations. Well, that was a successful uh, little mi snorkel mission. Alright guys, our dirty little crab here is going back. Dirty little spider crab. It's just all kind of crusty and stuff. But, uh, people do say you these are tasty. We'll wait for a bigger one. Nice catch though, Pops. What a fun time, Pop. Just exploring and oh man. I, I just this that there just opens up so much. Uh-huh. It's just friends it is the next day the shark covered in ice here it's ice sticking to him all right excited to try this ladies and gentlemen and then um i was thinking about what to do with the lobster and we're gonna wait on the lobster got this handy dandy cutting table right here but uh the lobster We've done a lot of lobster cooking lately, and I kind of want to focus on the shark, basically. If you guys want to check out some sweet lobster episodes where we've been experimenting with different ways of cooking them and stuff like that, I'll put a link to a playlist of those in the description. We have like four or five. They're pretty cool. So you know, I'll leave those in the description. But for now, let's focus on the shark. I'm going to play this bad boy. Oh, the skin is thick. Oh, it's thick. I'm gonna fillet it though. We're gonna make a shark sandwich today, so I need some nice big steaks for the sandwich. Cool thing about these sharks too is there aren't all kinds of uh, pin bones and thing like things like that in them. It's very, very nice eating them. And very easy filleting them actually. There we go. You know the funny thing is, I'm gonna throw this down in the canal and odds are another shark is going to come along and eat that. <laughs> this little cutting board is so nice. All done. The circle of life goes round and round. Alright. 
take the fillets in ice water up here and ladies and gentlemen we have here a little bar area under this tiki hut whoever owns this place is a fan of uh, Michigan or from Michigan I would say what a cool little spot under here but I'm gonna use the bar area as my personal kitchen here all set up drink some liquids here it's quite warm out today gonna have some Clamato juice anyway that's not important that's not part of the cook part yeah Clamato juice and I'm actually gonna try this new tea anyway I've got here some Zatarain's blackened seasoning which I tried in a previous video and it is delicious and I thought blackened shark might be a good thing I hear the cook uh, stove here and a pan and then we're gonna make shark sandwiches today I've got shredded lettuce this was actually two for one at the grocery store some tomatoes butter I have here some sucker punch pickles folks these were 99 cents they were on clearance not sure why they were on clearance but it says fiery spice garlic dill a uh, little unsure of how those are gonna taste since nobody wanted to buy them and they were just trying to get rid of them I don't know maybe it's just because it's a new company that's why nobody was buying them got here a nice big hoagie roll and a couple of chips bags of chips to try so that is the setup all right first thing i'm gonna do is pour myself some clamato juice i don't do mixed drinks ladies and gentlemen i get clamato juice and uh just drink it straight i like it like that all right let's get cooking here first things first Oh, good knit. Okay, let's get some butter. All right, I'm gonna throw a little butter in there and then I'm gonna throw just a smidge of oil so that the butter doesn't burn. Shock steaks. Yeah, I'm actually gonna pat these dry before I just throw them in there. And I'm gonna salt the bottom of the pan and then take the blackened seasoning and be real generous with that. Here we go. And take the filet and lay it right in there. Beautiful. Now I will salt this side as well. And blackened seasoning. Zatarans, I tell you what. Not sponsored, but Zatarans makes a really, really good product. Oh man, when it gets in your eyes, it's a little windy out here. Ah, I got a little in my eye. Better than getting in your nose, though. I gotta stay out of the way here. Ugh. Let's look at the bread here. Look at that. That is not a foot long. That's like a that's like a 20-inch sub. You know, they should make like a subway type place. Maybe I should make oh make a place that only sells like giant sandwiches no i got something better something way better i'm gonna make shark filet so you heard of chick-fil-a shark filet is going down we've already talked about turtle filet when i did the turtle catch and cook if you guys follow my channel but you know turtles that's hard to be have that be sustainable sharks however especially like those atlantic sharp nose they are not endangered at all. There are a ton of them out there. I could make Ace's Shark Filet restaurant. I like it. Just like have shark sandwiches, shark nuggets, what, shark salad. I always butter both sides, or butter. <laughs> I always put mayonnaise on both sides of my bread there. I'll show you why in a second. Whoa, hey, ho, oh, hey. Hot butter and all. Oh, looks good. Look how shark is steak like. Like if you did this with a snapper, it would just crumble. You'd have to use a spatula. You can't just grab it with tongs. I mean, that's the only piece that broke off there. Oh. Mmm. 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 Mm. All right, folks. Time to assemble my very first shark sandwich. I'm telling y'all, shark filet coming soon to cities near you. So first thing I'm gonna do is add some tomato. I love tomatoes on a sandwich. I love Campari tomatoes especially. And then I always add pepper 
and a little salt to my tomatoes. And I'll add some lovely lettuce to the top. A little messy, but a messy sandwich is a good sandwich. If a sandwich actually isn't very messy, it just probably isn't very good. And now you can see why I have mayonnaise on both sides, because the mayonnaise is kind of the glue. Okay, the glue for the lettuce and also for the fish. And I just kind of press the whole thing down. Take some of these new onion rings here. Let's see how these taste. Hmm, that's different. A sour cream and onion funyun. I'm also gonna open these up. Sucker punch. Smell good, smell garlicky. Garlicky, is that a word? I'll put it behind the sandwich there. Now, I'm not one much for presentation, but uh, that turned out really well. Can we cue some smooth jazz? <laughs> guys so my dad has joined me here we got the cook shark oh and a sandwich so the beautiful sandwich mm. <laughs> you know i don't know where to start we got the shark mm -hmm. plane we got the shark sandwich i see sucker punch pickles here mm -hmm. i see onion onions i think we should start with the shark sandwich that start with like, the shark i think so all right Let's see if i can do this. my beautiful shark sandwich is now going to be destroyed that's one thing about food you know you, <laughs> you make it and then boom it's gone Alright, should we say a prayer real quick? Yes, indeed. All right. well, Dear Lord, thank you so much for all your creation we get to enjoy and the variety of it. And I see bless it to our bodies now. Through Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. Alright. Mm. Here we go. There we are. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Wow, what kind of season is that? It's Zatarain's blackened seasoning. Mm. Guys, to me, shark tastes just like any other ocean mm -hmm. fish. Mm. Mm. It's a good, messy sandwich. Let me get you some. It requires paper towels. Thank you. Wow. Mm. That is good. I mean, that <laughs> bread is good, too. I have to say, that is actually a really good sandwich. Mm. Dang, yeah. Mm. Wow. Okay. You know, guys, I just made one half a sandwich and then left all that there because I wasn't sure how good shark should be on a sandwich, but uh, that's pretty darn good. Yeah, I'm going to try. Hey, so this is a hit. I, <laughs> I think so, too. Wow. Guys, so black and seasoning on the shark is uh, pretty darn good. We got to try a pickle. A little nervous about 99 cent pickles. S sucker punch pickles? Mm-hmm. Cheers. Hmm. That's different. That's a pickle. <laughs> when you think about it, mm. that's a pickle. That's kind of... I don't know what seasoning that is. There's there's an interesting flavor yeah, going on there, but... Mm -hmm. I, I like my pickles a little crunchier, mm -hmm. but the flavor's good. Oh, the flavor's good. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. The flavor's... I, can't, I, I, don't, I honestly don't know what kind of seasoning that is. But it's a decent pickle. Mm. Just different. Way different. It's a little spicy. Zatarans adds a nice little kick to their seasoning, which I mm. I love. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to sunny South Florida. Out here today on a rental boat, if you're new to this series. Check out that beautiful boat right there. That's so cool. Mianchen and I are headed out to the open water today because the wind has finally calmed down a little bit. We had quite a few windy days. And we're just going to see what's hap happening. We're going to troll a little bit. We've got all our snorkel stuff. And we're just going to go out, have fun. Sometimes when we try to plan things, the plans don't work out. So now we're just headed out with no plan. It's a beautiful day. And we're just going to see what happens.
the water is. Good net. It's like a, I don't even, yeah, guys, we're right by the ledge where we're gonna start uh, trolling first thing. But I mean, the water is just unbelievable out here. Wow, okay. So here's the first thing we're gonna do. What we got here is, oh, we got a big tangle. Shoot, I uh, should have secured those better. Well, I have here my antique fishing rod. Uh, let me get this tangle out real quick. Ay caramba, what the? All right, we are back in business here. Slight delay. All right, pulling out of our little cooler here. I've got here some Bonita strips. And uh, we're gonna tip these little pink baits, tuna baits that I got. If you guys are new to my channel, I don't know anything about trolling. And this is my first time fishing the Florida Keys. So we're just trying stuff. And this is called a tuna buster squid. I took a poll on my YouTube channel. I asked people who troll, I said, what's your favorite bait for tuna and those types of things they said strips of bonita which is just like a type of tuna i think this is the belly part and there we are my friends we're trolling this is an antique fishing rod that i got at a flea market for ten dollars and i put fresh line on it and the spool of line literally costs more than this wooden solid fiberglass antique rod. Let's see if I can catch something trolling on this old bird. I caught my first fish on it the other day. It was a shark actually. So. If you guys want to check out the video where I first acquired and used this antique rod, it is a members only video. I will put a link to my membership page in the description. If you guys want to check out extra content, it is only $1 per month and you get access to a whole library of members only videos. Oh, yeah, yeah, go tree. Yeah, just steer straight toward him. Straight toward him. And then, what I'm also going to do, my friends, is throw out this little bucktail. Yeah, then you want to get ahead of him. Yes, sir. There we go. And I have the bucktail jig out as well, guys. Don't know if that's something you do out here offshore, but thought I'd at least give it a go. Have the drag set real loose. Do we both have one or are we tangled? I, know, I think we're just tangled because while we're there, maybe they are. Guys, something weird is here going on here. We don't know what. Oh, I got a fish too. Oh, oh, I got a bahi. A bahi. A bahi. Oh, he just got off. Oh, shoot. No, no, he signs it to Mark. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so, oh, yeah. yeah oh, my it. gosh. Look, are you oh, getting that? Yeah. Gosh, we, got, we got a mahi and I, we both have one. Oh my goodness, Asa. Oh, look at that. Look at oh. this. Jump it. This is, this is, oh. oh my gosh. I can't believe this habit doubles. Guys, you have we've been, too? yeah, I do too. We've been trying so hard <laughs> for so long to troll. Or not, I mean, we, we've gone out like three or four times unsuccessfully. I just threw out the bucktail. I didn't have any bait on. I thought, well, mine as well. Oh my word. So we went through school and look how beautiful those things are. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, um, no, uh, you get yours in first, okay? On the old fishing rod, Asa. On the old antique, oh whoa, look at this. Woo. What the, look at that, look at I that. can't believe it. No, they have to be 20 inches to keep, do you yeah, think that's, that's a keep? 20 inches, that's fork length, right? Uh-huh, or so yeah, the you know, just, just get him in the boat. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Don't, yeah. and then I'll, we'll land mine. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Just gonna flip him in. Yeah, and just flip him in right here. Just right over the side. Whoa! Yes! We got our first oh fish Look trolling. Beautiful, that Pops. Is. Yes. Nice job, guys. We got our first mahi. Look at that gorgeous fish. All right, let's land mine now. All right. Oh, oh my word, <laughs> on the just a plain bucktail. Yes! Look at that! Are you kidding me? Double mahi! Whoa! Okay, I'm 
Okay. All right, yeah, 20 inches, I believe. Look at this, boy, this guy. Is. This guy here to the tail is... So he's like 20. All right, so he's 28, 24. or 24 to 24 the fork. 24 to the fork. Okay. He's way yeah. more than that, if you go to the end of the tail. Okay. Wow. Oh my goodness, what a gorgeous fish. Okay, okay. wow. So, to the end of the fork, he's 22. Or wait, go down. He's he's 21. 21 double 21. keepers, guys. Is that right? So yeah, I think it's so. Not, huh? It's it's here. Yeah, it's there. Either okay. way, see, because it's like 20 inches. Oh. So let's put oh, 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 oh. Sorry about that. Jeez. Okay. Um, let's start the live well. Yeah, just stick them in there. Oh guys. Oh, this is so exciting. Double oh wow. Here's the weird thing. One of them is through the bottom lip. You see that? Oh wow. It's like no, he bit both or something. Uh -huh. Did he bite wow. both? Guys, we've tried wow. trolling a bunch of times to no success. Wow. And wow we that wow. is so cool. Asa. Oh man, I, I'm a newbie at this guy, so that it feels so good. Guys, I chucked out this long bucktail. I didn't even bother to put bait on it. That's how unconfident I was that we were gonna get any bites on it, and I catch my first mahi. 140 feet? Nice. Alright, so that double squid has turned into a single squid with the hook staying in the one mahi's throat. Whenever you are ready, sir. And the antique rod is putting in work, guys. That's the second fish now. A shark and a mahi on the $10 rod. So we trolled for the rest of the afternoon. The weather was in our favor. We followed flocks of birds around, trying to get in front of schools of fish. We saw lots of flying fish. We tried different techniques. We switched around to different baits, but just could not get any more bites. There are so many Portuguese man of war out here, guys. We decided not to go lobster hunting or, or any kind of diving because when one of those one of those draped across your face or on my bald head or on your bald head, I've had it happen on my legs, and it is not good. Mm. Well, at least it was a success. At least it was a su success. I'm happy, guys. I'm honestly really happy. my friends it is the next day and uh, it's time to play up my first pelagic or play agic yeah pelagic fish or is it pelagic pelagic uh, I think it might be pelagic you know don't quote me on that I'm not really sure myself it's cool to catch my first mahi trolling I've been on guided tours before um, I mean, that's that's fun. That's fun. A guided fishing tour. Nothing wrong with that. But to actually, like, research how to troll, go to Bass Pro Shops, get a few baits, figure out how to rig them up, and read some blog posts, and watch some videos, and then to go out three or four times with no success, and then finally, oh, look, that guy's eating an ice cube. Um, it's the fourth time we've been out, like, by ourselves on the boat, and we finally get some, and to have it be doubles, too. That's actually pretty cool to me. All right. Yeah, I used to play RuneScape a lot. And uh, I think it's fine if you're a kid, I guess, playing video games. Then around, uh, I think it was 20 or so, maybe 21, can't quite remember. The story's actually a little fuzzy in my mind because it wasn't a, at the time it wasn't a big deal. You know, it wasn't like I woke up one day and said, I'm gonna stop playing video games. It was kind of an overtime thing where I would sit down and play and then I feel guilty and it was like I'm a grown man and I just was playing video games and I also had all these like dreams and aspirations I was like 20 I had all these things that I wanted to do and instead of pursuing those I'm like sitting in front of a computer screen playing a fake game pretending like I'm doing stuff because in RuneScape if you've ever played it before there's like you can fish in the game and then you can cook in the game you can mine you do all these like things <laughs> you can actually like do in real life Oh wait, I think I'm making a mess of this. Oh, there's the spine. Speaking of leveling up in real life. So I'll lay on this side. I, I made a mess. Uh, too much time talking. Just a second, folks. All right. 
Alright, so I think I kind of rescued it. I, um, yeah, almost messed that one up majorly. This is my first time trying it, <laughs> so this is real. Anyway, RuneScape is an interesting game because you'd be doing things that, like, you can actually do in real life, like cooking, fishing, oh. archery, even, well, I guess if you really want to get ambitious, you can mine as well. I just realized I did this wrong. This is such a thin-skinned fish, I, mean, I could have skinned it. Anyway, I'm sitting there, like, leveling up this character, and it kept occurring to me, why am I leveling up a character in a fake game when I could actually be, like, doing all of this stuff? This is really dumb. Especially now that I'm a man, I have a driver's license, I have a job, like I have freedom, I can do what I want, go where I want, and instead I'm choosing to like sit inside and pretend to do stuff. And there wasn't any a specific day where it's like, from here on out, I'm not playing any more video games. It's kind of a slow thing. Anyway, leveling up in real life is more of a mindset because it's going to apply differently to each person. Let's pretend that like you're really into four-wheeling, okay? You have a, a four-wheeler or a dirt bike. You love four-wheeling and dirt biking. But your usual routine is to wake up on Saturday morning and play Call of Duty all morning. But instead, you're like, I'm in this new mindset and this, and this new attitude. I'm going to go four-wheeling on this brand new trail that I found in the mountains that I've been wanting to go on, but I haven't yet. I'm gonna do that. So you get all your stuff together and you go out four-wheeling. You're leveling up your four-wheeling skills. You're exploring a new trail. And on the new trail, you suddenly find this big patch of puffball mushrooms. And you've been watching my channel and you're like, wait, Ace cooked up puffball mushrooms in one of his videos. I'm gonna try this. So you gather up a bunch of puffball mushrooms and of course you look up on your phone to make sure they really are the ones you can eat. So. You cook up a batch of puffball mushrooms and it's really satisfying to go out and find your own food and cook it. So you have the satisfaction of exploring a new trail and leveling up your dirt biking skills. And now you just leveled up your cooking skills and discovered a new food in the forest that you could go for. And that's just one Saturday morning. And so you can see how there are a million different applications for each person based on your interests and stuff like that. And that's kind of the mentality that I tried to adopt way before I had a YouTube channel. Of course, it's, it's gone real, it dovetailed perfectly into when I went and decided I want to start a YouTube channel. I'd already been doing all this crazy stuff for a while and I had this, I don't know, this mentality that was good for an outdoor channel. I don't know if I cut that wrong or something. I left a whole bunch of meat on the skin there, so. This is not going super well, but this is a good example because when you try new things, a lot of times you fail at first and you get really used to failure until you get good at things and then and then you, it's real satisfying when you finally get it. I will conquer filleting mahi eventually. This was a female, look, she was loaded with eggs. Wow, loaded with them. All right, and up here we have a pool and hot tub and we have this cool little bar area under here folks sweet little spot all decorated up this is a rental i don't live here i think this is really cool this lure that's been absolutely shredded by something big um looks like they're using like 50 pound test leader and you see the teeth marks on that thing anyway that is really cool we got mahi up there somebody must have been from Michigan, although they do have, a, I never noticed the South Carolina one there actually, but uh, a lot of Michigan stuff around here, Michigan football, more mahi, and there's actually an old fishing rod, speaking of antique fishing rods, right here, and uh, I was tempted to use it, but it's not mine, so anyway, cool little spot, and I've taken over the bar area and I'm going to use it as my personal kitchen this morning. I'm going to use a beer batter mix for the fish, and I'm also going to cook up some onion rings. Been really digging the onion rings lately. Now I'm going to take this Corona here. Don't know if it matters a whole lot about um, what kind of beer you use. It's kind of cool. Use, looks like it meant to be like a vintage mile marker kind of thing, mile marker zero in Key West there, but it's really faded. Anyway, um, I don't know if it matters that much what kind of beer mix you use with this stuff. 
We'll see how Corona tastes. I've actually never used Corona with it. Mix this up with a fork. All right, so now that this is a consistency that I like, let's add some seasonings to it. My first cast seasoning, of course, link in the description. Basically the best seasoning in the whole world. Get absolutely crazy with that. And then we got some salt and pepper in this. It's just a nice mix. And then I have here some Zatarans blackened seasoning, which I have, I, I'm really digging on this stuff. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this because this is some, just a little bit different spices. It's not, it's kind of some darker, you know, darker, punchier spices. There we go, we'll mix that in there real good. Mm. So now that that's all mixed up, I'm gonna take some Ritz crackers here and put a whole bunch in here. Mm. I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm gonna use my fingers, crunch these up. There we go, just made a nice little cracker crumb mix there. A little sweet onion here. All right, we're gonna take some of these and drop them in there. We go and drop them in the Ritz mix. I also add a little uh, salt and pepper to this just in case. Um, mostly pepper, you know, because the crackers are already salty. Take the lid off. Oil should be nice and toasty for these things. All right, all right. These are gonna be nice and crispy, crisp onion rings here. The reason why I'm cooking the onion rings first is because I saw on this recipe online that people use, uh, they use a bat, the batter and the, the crackers. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna give that a go. Cause normally I don't really coat my fish in crackers or anything like that. And uh, I just thought I'd give it a try with Ritz since I've never done it before. Might as well put the onion rings in danger of being not very good instead of my fish. I'm also going to add some ketchup to this little, uh, this little, uh, I hate the ketchup juice. This cup here, it's actually meant for martinis or something. I don't know, I don't do the whole mixed drink thing. It's meant for, it's not meant for ketchup, let's put it that way. Oh my, yes, yes, look at it. It's beautiful. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, my friends, that looks really good. Let's hope it tastes as good as it looks. Now it's time for the fish. Snuggle them right down in there. Folks, I'm starting to uh, favor batters more because I like the real crisp crunch on the fish versus the, you know, just like the dry breads. I mean, I'm really liking it, really digging it. You know, this beer batter mix, I'm gonna, it's also, it do, you don't have to put any like crumbs. You know, I actually have, for this one, we'll do a crumbs. The first one, we'll try the old crumbs on. I don't see why that, I don't see how that could be bad, you know. Just get nervous about wasting my precious mahi mahi there. You see, these are gonna be thickly coated. Mm -hmm. First time with onion rings with a Cracker crumble crust. Not bad. But you know what's lacking? More of my first cast seasoning. I needed to be extra generous with this. And it lacks the punch. I'm sure for most people, they would actually eat this. And they would go, this is delicious. But it lacks a punch to me. I'm gonna make two fish sandwiches or fish burgers, depending on what your perception is. Is it a fish sandwich or is it a fish burger when you put it on hamburger buns, you know? I mayo up both sides of the sandwich. And back to the fish, looking golden brown and crispy crisp. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. We'll start with the bases. Hmm. I have a conundrum. 
you know we'll just we'll just fit them on there they can hang over the sides you know there we go the first bite will probably be pure fish put some pickles I should start a restaurant what do you guys think Ace's place some lettuce and slices of tomato not only for deliciousness but also for color and you must salt the tomatoes too you do not neglect the salting of the tomato oh this is going to be a mouthful switch it out for this lovely picnic summery looking plate and oh man ladies and gentlemen i think I need to cue the smooth music Jarvis, can we cue a jazz tune? <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you, this... I have a life, I have to tell you. <laughs> I go out and fish on a boat that I didn't rent with gear I didn't buy to help catch fish, and then I come back and wait for a meal to be prepared for me. <laughs> well, think Is about this the life. Now I have to say, think about how many times you took us fishing when you're little. All four of us. Well, that, that's or, true. Uh -huh. yeah, I, that's true. But yeah. I, I, I sure like this time a lot. People talk <laughs> about not enjoying getting older. So far, I've enjoyed every day of getting older in my life. So, <laughs> anyway. Well, should we pray real quick? Indeed. Would you like to pray? Yes, Heavenly Father. Uh, again, thank you so much for this bounty from the ocean. Thank you for Ace's hands that prepared it. And I ask you to bless it to our bodies and thank you for this day you've given us. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. So, I don't, I think I'm going to try the uh -huh. you know, onion ring An first. An onion ring first. Good. You try the bond, I know the bond was, one is going to be crispier. The first, okay. well, maybe it's just because the way, the, or, oh, sorry, the middle one. Well, no. each, either, <laughs> either Jeez, one is. You're confusing me, man. They're, they're all good. It's just crispiness, you know, kind of a thing. This is definitely crispier. The mm -hmm. onion ring. The second round were how onion rings. The wind kept blowing away my heat the oh, first time. Like the yeah. gusts kept coming yep, up. So yep, that'll mess you up. Oh, are good. Mm. Now, try the sandwich. Tell me what you think. My dad loves a filet of fish sandwich at McDonald's. Although oh, you get a double, don't you? I guess. I mean, there's a double here on mm -hmm. this one. Mm -hmm. Look at that. I stuck two uh, filet chunks wow. on there. So this is mahi mahi. Mm -hmm. Going down. Thank you. You're welcome. Asa? Wow. Good stuff. That. Guys, if you get a chance to eat fresh mahi mahi, let alone catch it yourself, I mean, wow. I see why they serve mahi mahi in restaurants mm -hmm. you know, and, and highlight it. They tell you this is mahi mahi. I'm going to have just a piece of the fish. Yeah. I have so much. Yeah, I just packed it on there so yeah. you can. That's good bread, too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's your own Big. concoction, or? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's beer batter, but I add a bunch of stuff to it. I have to say that is a really good fish full of sandwich look, look, right look there. At that. Look at that. When the sandwich is sloppy and stuff, it has to be sloppy or it's not mm -hmm. going to be good. That's right. There better be debris on your plate, folks. The graph should say, here's the sloppiness line and here's the flavor line. And they both go up together. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is so stinking good. Mm. Mm -hmm. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Florida series. Today, my dad and I are fishing in the kayak, but first, I'm down at this beach right by this pier. I gotta get some bait. I got a cast net and a bucket with me. And I'm gonna see if there are any uh, like shiners around. Hello. How Good, how are you? I'm hoping to get shiners for fishing. Yes, sir. Like these little guys right here. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Can you see them out there or you just know they're there? I just know they're there. They're, oh. usually, they're usually around the base of the pier. Hey, you too. Yeah, I see you. I see you. Seven of them. Hey you, hey, hey, get out of it. Look at he stole he stole the fish guys. He stole some of my bait. I see you. 
Well guys, I only got six, six pieces of bait, unfortunately. All right guys, so we just pulled up to the tackle store. We're actually gonna buy some shrimp, given the lack of, uh, given the lack of shiners. Check this out. Hello. Is this shrimp delivery? Yes. That's cool. May I look inside of it? Thank you. So this is how it works. And you just kind of vacuum them in there. Thank you. No problem. There aren't any shrimp in there because they just put them in the store. But I think uh, it's so interesting. They just deliver them and uh, send them in there by vacuum. All are loaded now. Yeah, they dropped some off for us finally. Yeah, got little crabs in there. Oh, that's really good. Stuff. Yeah, for the sheep head. Okay. Guys, when we went to the pier the other day, these people were just smoking the sheep head on these little crabs. We didn't know where they got them. All right, my friends, we got the bait. It's on to a new fishing spot. We've never fished before. Let's go. All righty, guys, now we are down at this little beach area under this bridge and uh, we're all set up here oh i'm so excited for this but it's getting hot out here we have our kayak here my dad's been keeping the bait alive and uh look at the current look how it's ripping <laughs> we're gonna have one person's gonna have to paddle yep there's all our bait one person's gonna have to paddle the other person's gonna have to fish for a while all right my friends Off on another adventure. I'll get us kind of close along the bank. All right, guys, check this out. So we're on this side here. We got boat docks, all this good looking structure. And we actually had some guys tell us that this was a good spot. So we're just gonna give it a go for the first time. First cast. Man, it is just ripping through here. This is amazing. Fish on. Yep. Ooh, sheep's head. All right. All right, boss. I say we keep that one. Uh-huh. You know, I think you have to be though. Oh, 10 the inches. Yeah, I'll get us right in the hole. There you go. In the dock. Yep. We can measure. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys, I'm just going to snuggle us right by here. Nice sheep's head pops. Grab onto this. If you want to go for it, I'll hold on and you can... I just need... Or you can look in the bag okay. and there's that plastic thing that we bought has a measure on it. I'll just hold us here and then I'll drop a line when yep. you're done measuring oh, yeah. it. Bon voyage, sir. Hmm. All right. All right, guys, my turn. Chat, we got a shrimp right there. Let's drop it. Thunk. Right there. Oh, missed him, right there. Oh shoot, now I'm in the tree. Well, we just need the hook now. It's gonna come back and hook me probably. There we go. All right guys, we got something down here. Let's get him, let's get him. See that? Yeah, your bait's gone on that. Got him, got him. Nice. What do we have? Another sheep's head. Another sheep's head. It's a little small one, but hey, yep. we got a couple of them. Guys, they have to be over 12 inches here in Florida. Nice. That's the first sheep's head. I, I remember catching one when I was a little, little boy, like 11 years old. But since then, this is basically the first one I've ever caught. There we go. Pretty sure that's not 12 inches. But we're going to let him go. All right, there you go. All right, my friends, this is kind of precarious what we're doing. The current's just so strong. You see how it's ripping by here? Oh, my dad is. Try a little shine, a little green back. Yeah, a little green back there. He's gonna, we're just dropping it right down here. This is funny. You know what I'll do is if you get one, I'll just push away. There you go. And that way you have room to haul him out of there. Let's try it. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> He's gone. Minnow is gone, folks. I felt a little tap, but I thought I'd just hit the bottom of the air. So. This is actually really fun. Like once we got out here, it was hard getting uh, over here stuff. So guys, here's question of the day. When you're catching sheep's head, since we're total newbies at this, when you get just catching small ones, do they school according to size like perch do, or is it just like a mixed, they all mix together? We don't know if we should move on or we should, you know, keep fishing. 
Got him. Got him. Ooh, this is a better sheep That's head. This might be a keeper. Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's see. All Here right. You you ah. Whoa. Hey, settle down, bro. Settle down. All right. All right, guys. Oh, it's barely a keeper. Nice. Guys, it's like 12 and 3 quarters. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is one of the first times we'll do a sheep's head catch and cook. This will be the first time on my channel. There you go. <laughs> Get in there. Yes. Looks like meat's back on the menu. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Ooh, another one. Ooh, this one is, uh... I don't think he'll make it. I don't think he'll make it either. Looks like the size of the ones we caught at first. Yeah. They must be stacked around this dock here. Alright, guys, he swallowed it, so we're just gonna have to let him off there. But that is cool. They are loaded under here. Alright, kids, don't try this at home, especially if you're, <laughs> there are vipers and stuff like that. I don't know. There are only a few here. Only a few in Florida. We already heard one drop in the water, so we should be okay. <laughs> Got him. Ooh, oh. Oh. Good. Oh man. That that looked. Like that was uh huh. Good. That was solid. That was a stout one. All right, guys, right back in there. Come on. Got him. Ooh, another one. Ooh, this is gonna be close. Boy, they are stacked up in here, though. Well, my friends, super cool to catch a bunch of these sheep's head, but they're all like non-keepers. So we're gonna move on from this dock and head out, head, head, just let the current take us down river. Look, that guy's in his kayak as well. We got two kayak fishermen. This is cool. Pops, I sure love doing this stuff with oh, you. Yeah, right around in here though, this might be... Oh, uh, that's what I'm looking at too. A little slack water, any, any pool or any, mm -hmm. any pool. No saltwater crocodiles here, right? No, yeah, I think. Correct, right? <laughs> I hope. Oh, oh, yeah, oh my gosh! Oh, something just took it! I mean, I mean whammo. Okay, here we go. I just popped it. I had, yeah. You know I haven't been popping this thing. I uh, know, I it. I'll get us in better position so you can. Oh man. Yeah, that that attracts fish. Apparently they they know that popping sound. That that comes pre-made like that. That uh, clicking. Okay. There's a there's like a brass. I don't know what the thing is on the bottom, but it's supposed to attract. Started running, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, nice, Got nice. It. Oh. Nice pops. What do you got? It is, but we got it. Oh, it's a Spanish mackerel. No way. Yeah. Oh, I like. Oh, look at Spanish mackerel. Uh, that's cool. Oh, him foul hook yeah, you kind of. He, he probably grabbed it look, so he, fast. Yeah, he, he took the tail off. Oh, he ate. Oh, that is cool. Oh, he grabbed it by the tail. Can we keep these? Oh yes. Oh, he's got some teeth too, son. I'm telling you. He ain't done thrashing yet. I'm gonna let him thrash a little more. I'm afraid he's gonna get me. Are we on a sandbar? Oh, we're on a sandbar. Ready? Yeah. See if I can toss him. Oh, <laughs> he's, he got your swimsuit, didn't he? Hey, you. Oh, my gosh. That was cool. That is cool. You know, it was right on that ledge. You want to get out and we, on the sandbar, we, you cast toward that ledge? Okay, I'll get out. Well, I'll just stand here. You go fish that spot since oh, you're oh, using oh. the bobber. So it's my job to hold the boat while my dad's up there. He's trying to catch another Spanish mackerel. I'm going to throw my line out there in the deep with a little shrimp. See if I can get something while I'm standing here. Guys, I got something. Got something. Fish on. On a piece of shrimp. Just out in the middle. Woo! <laughs> this is cool. What have we here? This is so much fun. I'm having a blast. Oh, it's a big, uh, big whiting, isn't it? Is it? Oh my gosh, it's just a big whiting. A I thought it was a redfish at first. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, a big. Oh my gosh. That's the keeper for sure. I'm keeping that one. Those are tasty. Let him There we go. Oh, I'm getting a bit. You guys see that? Got it. 
Got another one. Mm-hmm. Back to back, two casts in a row. It's not very big. Got a pelican eye in him though. Oh, it's another one. It's another nice size one. Now let's throw him. Oh, nope, never mind. Well, we're only keeping one. <laughs> he made his escape. He earned it. He deserves it. Put that piece of bait right back on there. I'm using just a piece of uh, cut bait there. Getting bit, getting bit. Got him. Got something. It's something small. Got one. It's uh, what is this? Oh, it's a ladyfish. That's cool. It's only like the second ladyfish I've ever caught. That's a pretty fish. I mean, you can tell I'm new. These are like trash fish to all the local fishermen. I think it's cool. Big eyes. There she goes. Oh, she's fast. That was fun. Well, guys, that was a good morning kayak fishing session. Uh, we've got three different species now to take back home and cook up. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Are you the guy from YouTube? Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. Really? Yeah, Ace Videos, it's called. Really? Uh-huh. I, I think I subscribed to you. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's so nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you, too. What's your name? Will. Will, nice yeah, to meet you, I love Will. Your videos. Oh, thank yeah. you. The Florida series will be coming out. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, if you want to check it out, you'll be yeah, you'll yeah. be in it. So. Nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, see you, cool. man. Nice, nice to meet you, too. So, guys, I was taking stuff back from the kayak. This guy's hooked up on something. What pound test do you have? Six. Six pound test? Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a... That's a snook. Oh. Nice. Oh, that is... I got my GoPro off, so I just didn't. Okay, crazy. Turn it on. Nice snook. <laughs> that he was trying to break you off on that bridge yeah. there. Six oh. pound test, nice job. Six yeah, six pounds. Pound. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> that was finesse, baby. <laughs> hey, good job. Yeah, I'll yeah. See you on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, All right, guys. So my dad and I are down here. Um, at this little picnic table. And I'm going to start cooking up our catch, but he's going to go out and he's going to fish off here. If you guys have been following along with the series, he's already caught a big snook off of here. So I thought it'd be perfect while I'm cooking, he goes and he fishes. I like that plan. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. So the object of the game for me is to walk out, see if I can see any minnows flicking the surface or find some minnows, catch some, put them in our bucket and uh, see if we can't ca catch our bait, catch a fish. We don't need many. Let's just toss it out there. All I need is a couple. Okay, guys, we're in business. Here we go. Here we go. We're in business. Good stuff here. Yeah, snook. Okay. Let's get it going. Okay, we got it out there. Just have it out there a time or two. See if the snook are eating. Fish on, boys, fish on. There we go. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh my gosh, check, oh he's a good one too, another pretty fish, <laughs> oh go, 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 you go right ahead, go as far as you want, long as you want. There you go. <laughs> There you are. 
a, a snook, that's not a bad one. Um, they're out of season right now. But I'm gonna take it over to my son. He's shooting a video over there and he's gotta take a good <coughs> Yes ma'am, he's doing the cooking right now. <laughs> so yes ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Hey sir. I'm here. I got a snook. Oh my goodness. I didn't For, First time out there with him. With the, I finally found the minnows. And, you found the minnows. You yep. I didn't clean the fish. Yet. Well, they were swimming. The snook are in like they're in like within the first three feet of water in that where it's gray water oh, from the really? surf. I saw two of them shoot out. Yeah. Will we take the hook out? Yeah. Would that you? I'm gonna amazing. let him go. So. Nice job. Isn't that, oh, he is. This is a good fit. He was a good fighter. He jumped once too. Yeah. These are like the largemouth bass of salt water. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. All right, man. All right, guys. I got a big one on there this time. Pretty big one. Let's see how he does. Let's see if he can call up a fish. Oh, there goes there goes some fish. See those? You know what? I'm gonna keep this thing in, in shore a little bit. I'm just gonna keep this thing in shore, and we're just gonna try it and see what happens. here is kind of a cutting board. I'm just gonna fillet all the fish, try to make them boneless, because we're gonna make some fish sandwiches, specifically a sheep's head sandwich. I'm gonna clean this Spanish mackerel too. These have to be over 14 inches to keep, and uh, we measured this, we didn't realize that till afterwards, so we measured this guy, and he's about 14 and a half. So just barely under the size limit, but I've tasted these before and Spanish mackerel are delicious. They're very easy to clean too. Look how easy, I mean the knife just cuts through them like butter. They have really, really soft skin. Lovely little filet. All right, so the fish is filleted. We've got a nice bunch of boneless meat there. I kind of wish we caught some bigger ones, but that's okay. You know, that just means I have to come back out here and do it again. Um, I'm all out of my first cast seasoning, folks. So I'm going to be using some Cabela's Sriracha and Onion Rub seasoning and some Louisiana Kitchen tartar sauce. Oh, and my lemon's rolling away with a little bit of lemon. And uh, uh, so it should just be a good... Good little fry. We're gonna make some fried fish sandwich sandwiches. That's my dad's, one of my dad's favorites to make a fried fish sandwich. He has one. My dad has another fish, guys. I haven't even started cooking. He has a second fish. <laughs> another nice one. He was, I mean, I was bringing it in and he thought he got it and another one was just like bass. He was trying to, he got it and the other one's just slashing at him. Trying really? To they all yep. chased him? Yep, they both chased the That is the so bait. cool. Yep. Yep. Nice job. Oh two and, and two. I can't even get started cooking. <laughs> Asa, I saw another one and he was four feet off away from shore. Really? Maybe we've been casting out yeah. too far. That's right. What a beautiful fish. Isn't that pretty? Man. That is so cool. cool. That is super, super cool for my dad. This is so much fun. He gets the fish and I get to cook. Well, I've been, yeah. I need to get cooking here before he catches another one. First, I'm gonna add some lemon. Then I'm actually gonna go straight for this, uh, add some sriracha and onion, just a light coating on it before we even get to the main breading kind of in reverse order, because I am going to bread this up. I just want to coat the fillets and some of that good seasoning there. This is the last day of the trip, folks, and this is all working out perfectly. I have my Louisiana fish fry seasoning, and I'm down to the last bit. I always add a little salt to it. It's not salty enough to me. Then I'm going to add a lot of this sriracha rub, which smells very strong. In fact, you don't want to get this in your eyes. Woo! Sriracha fish, sriracha fish sandwich. And I'm just going to drop all of the fish. They've been marinating for about five minutes. And uh, there. I figured that, that spicy citrus like combo is usually killer. And get them all thoroughly breaded. I'm going to add some of this tartare sauce to it. Add a 
adding a little lettuce for crispiness and fresh flavor. Now the sheep's head is going in, folks. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice because the long fillets are the whiting, the wide fat fillets are the sheep's head, and the really skinny fillets are the mackerel. I keep thinking that I hear my dad saying, got one, the whole time I'm cooking. And he, wait, wait. Oh, he, he missed it. Did you miss it? Did you miss one? Oh yeah, his bait is gone. His bait, he missed another one. That's number three. My friends, I present to you a sheep's head sandwich. Oh, <laughs> look at that. I'm proud of this meal right here, folks. I am proud of this one. And then for myself, folks, I am going to make a Spanish mackerel sandwich. Bam, bam, yes. All right, I'm gonna go get me ancient. How goes the war? I am, I've got you a sheep's head sandwich. Mm-hmm. The current is just ripping. This is a cool little beach. I like this beach a lot. All right, Pops. Oh, man. Here we go. I am so, so hungry. <laughs> I know. So we have, this is a sheep's head sandwich. This is a Spanish mackerel oh, sandwich. So Sheep's head first? Yeah, well, I thought you would like that because you said you, re you really thought those were delicious, but you can have either one. Okay. Right. Say a prayer? Sure. Amen. Amen. So sheep's head first. Yes, yeah. so you can try. I, I kind of made one for each of us, but I guess we okay. could. Uh, change oh, we'll have around. to swap a little. We'll have to swap a little. Yeah. Put a little. Put a little extra. Just I knew you would get a little extra. I put Did double put tartar on sauce oh, on both oh, sides okay. of yours because okay. I knew. Cheers. Bon appetit. Mm. Now, I don't see why people go after these. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm. Guys, look, I, you know, I keep forget forgetting. I gotta do fish sandwiches more often because mm. I love the combo of that. Wow. No swap? Sure. I know I love the mackerel. That's good fish. My first time trying sheep's head. Mmm. Oh man. Sheep's head is good. Mm -hmm. I see guys when we were fishing on the pier the other day, there were guys that they would fill oh. out their limit mm -hmm. and they would keep all and of them. They were big. I mean They were big. They're being on pounds pound. of meat. Mm -hmm. I see why, because this is a really yeah. good fish. Now one guy said he comes every day. Yeah, and there was a guy on the pier who said he comes every single day. He comes here for like three months out of the year and fishes every yeah. single day he's here. And for he had springers of sheep's head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Over this way. I think that has us. This is it here. This is it. Drop anchor. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Florida series. We are in beautiful, sunny Florida in the Keys. The water is looking extra fine today. Bluish green. First things first, we are hanging up the dive flag so that other boats know, hey, don't come ripping by here. We're in the water. Wouldn't want somebody to take our head off while we're trying to hunt lobster. Getting chopped by a 300 would definitely ruin your snorkeling trip. In case you are new to my channel, this is a rental boat that the ancient and I have for a little while. And uh, so we're taking it out as many times as possible while we have it. And just seeing what's out here. Snorkeling one day, fishing the next. Got our lobster bag here. Is there, you good? Mm-hmm. Here we go. All right. <laughs> I'm going in. How's the water feel? Beautiful. Beautiful. Just throw those things to you. Tickle stick. Do a quick, whoa, shark scared. And, uh, we're good, I think. So when we lobster hunt, we simply find an area where there's some nice coral and we swim down, we just start looking under all the rocks. And we actually target these kind of coral graveyard areas. You can see they make a lot of nice little caves and spots for lobster to swim under. Uh, we've noticed that if we go to places where the corals are really vibrant, healthy, and there are a lot of like those kind of fan looking things growing and stuff like that, there aren't as many. Um, so we like the areas where the, the hurricanes have kind of hit, and I see one right here. I'm trying to get my dad's attention. Uh, we like the areas where 
when hurricanes have hit the keys real hard in the past, they really, really tear up the coral. And and in some areas, they make these kind of like graveyards. You can see like just all the coral bones, if you will, along the bottom there. And uh, it makes nice little caves. And you see there are two lobster, and they're actually located these ones by just seeing the tips of the antenna stick out. I didn't even know there were two of them. So I let my dad know, and he's a much better lobster hunter than I am. In fact, I kind of let him do most of it. He enjoys it a lot, and uh, I enjoy <laughs> filming it. And so he goes down to get him. He did not realize that uh, there was a back door to this. I did because I swam down there at first, and so I wasn't surprised one popped out the back trying to get away. I couldn't quite get him. This is a little bit deeper spot, so it's a little bit more uh, uh, difficult for us. Probably about 15 feet, 15 feet plus. But me ancient swims down. When he tries to go out the back door, he grabs him. And this was the first lobster of the day. When you're catching lobster in Florida, you have to measure them right away before you put them in the bag. You can't catch a bunch and then throw them all in there and measure them later uh, because anything in the bag does count as a catch. So we measured this one right away and unfortunately, before this trip, I had a local warn me that we needed to be super careful how we measured the lobster because the fishing game was very, very strict. It had to be over that three inch mark or you're going to get a ticket. He said there's no even, you know, if you're a one thirty second of an inch off, um, you're, they'll give you a ticket. So uh, we had to put that one back, but there was another one under there and he fled. And so we were in pursuit and they are quicker than they, than they look. They're not like a crawdad. And he actually makes his way back toward the original cave. We kept trying to chase him. And he goes right back to the cave where we started. This is one of the things we absolutely love about Florida as opposed to Hawaii. Um, here they just don't have a lot of options, especially in these coral graveyards. Whereas like in Hawaii, you have the massive coral heads. They have so many places to hide, so many deep caves and stuff like that to go back into. And here it's just much easier. Oh yeah. Is it the same one as before? I don't think so. Both lobster were very similar in size, but this one was just a tad bigger than the first one. So we got first keeper of the day. We were excited. So you can kind of get a glimpse here of what uh, some of the spots were like. So you had almost these like underwater forest areas and they were really cool, but the lobster didn't seem to be hanging out in these spots. They liked the, the dead areas. So it was cool to see the underwater tree swaying, if you will, but uh, they liked when everything was all torn up. You can kind of see how he's smelling my camera with his antenna there. I thought that was really cool. So I swam down with this one. And this was a really weak attempt at grabbing a lobster. And I was trying to think, why am I so bad at this? And I think it's because I'm in kind of a crawdad mentality where you can just kind of sneak your ha hand around behind him and snatch him. You know, I don't know. But right here, I thought I saw the tail of an eel sticking out, a moray eel. So I tried to get the lobster away from the eel first so I could catch it. Moray eels are very vicious. In fact, I seen a video one time of a scuba diver who got bit in the There's face an by an eel. It, like, it literally tore his snorkel mask off. So I'm a little nervous around him, and I thought I'm gonna try to get the lobster away from there and, uh, and then try to, to grab it. But as we look closer, we realized it wasn't the tail of an eel, it was the tail of a shark. So we had in this one cave, a shark chilling with his two lobster buddies, I guess. They must get along real well together because this is the second time we've seen this. So my dad swims down and what does he do? He grabs the shark, of course. Don't try this at home, guys. They are very flexible and can uh, reach around and bite you. Don't let him get me. <laughs> He's trying to get you. My dad is just a beast, grabbing a shark by the tail. It's, it's not everyone that would do that, that's for sure. 
Uh, as uh, some Floridians told me, they said these sharks can whip around and bite their own tail, so be very careful handling them, and uh, that's why my dad is holding them kind of behind the head. And nurse sharks don't look like they have uh, many teeth, but I have opened the mouth of one, and they have plenty. So, uh, definitely not an activity I recommend for everyone. What do we do with this? Catch your cookie? Yeah, that'd be 54 inches. Oh. Well, should we let him go? Alrighty. So, me ancient wanted to keep and eat it, which had been pretty cool to keep and eat a shark that you caught by hand, uh, but it was undersized. So, let the little baby go. And uh, I couldn't help but think, as it was swimming away, I sure hope he's not going off to find his mama. So it got to a point where whenever we saw a rock the size of a tire or bigger, there was a really good chance there was going to be a lobster under it. And this was a nice size lobster here. In fact, this spot was very convenient because in the top of the rock there was this hole, kind of like a little uh, chimney, and made it very convenient for my dad to flush the lobster out. You can see right here the, the uh, tickle stick, he's poking it through the chimney and flushes him out and grabs him. This is a nice size lobster. We were excited about this one. That's a big one. Kicker lobster. Woo, nice. It's really cool when you catch one so big you don't even have to measure it. Uh, you know, kind of like catching a 15, 16, 17 inch bass. Just throw them in the live well. And uh, my dad left me hanging, by the way. Um, this little thing here, not sure what that was, a worm, a parasite, a underwater millipede? I don't know, somebody could enlighten me in the comment section, I'd appreciate it. And then here's a little undersized lobster. Um, I guess when you're too small, you can just uh, you know, go on strolls in the middle of the daytime. Uh, nobody's gonna bother you. And I think that's what uh, what he was doing. And a little stingray here. I think these are a really neat stingray. They're called round stingray, I just learned. And this was a big one. They only get about 12 inches in diameter max. So always fun seeing those. And then under this rock, uh, which is practically underneath the nose of the boat, this is one of the last places I checked for a lobster, <laughs> right under the boat. And there was a nice one in there. But I actually grabbed him by the head and he got away and I pulled off both of his antenna. He was trying to flee though, I realized afterwards, because the, uh, the little cave he had chosen um, was not very deep at all. In fact, when I uh, stick the GoPro back there, you can see he's just kind of huddled in the corner. So very vulnerable at that spot. And actually I started to try to tickle him out of there and I was like, what am I doing? Just reach back there and grab him. So I did. It's actually harder to get them out than it appears. They he really put up a fight. They're they're strong for a little crustacean. They are strong, and uh, pulled them out of there. Definitely looked like a keeper. But then <laughs> right here, hold them in the water, and he uh, makes a flick of the tail and gets away. But this was kind of interesting because he swims back down. And he doesn't get in the cave, though. He just stays right on the outside, and I was able to grab him again. I don't know if it uh, knew it couldn't go back in its cave, because it would just get re-caught again. But uh, it was a nice last catch. And we decided to call it after that, about an hour, hour and a half before sunset, uh, because we just worry about shark activity as the evening comes on. I mean, there's a reason why beach fishermen set out their shark lines Beautiful. about this time. So, decided to call it a day. <laughs> I'll take the catch. catch. <laughs> that was a good time. Oh, we tiring. Didn't, tiring, yeah. We didn't see as many as we oh, have before in the past. Nearly. Oh, that's always fun in the water. Oh, that is. So many cool things to see. <laughs> I'm like your mama now. Mm. So quick text. She'll be excited. Mm -hmm. Although she'll probably ask us why we didn't get more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, set a course for home.
Well, the lobster stayed nice and cold last night. <laughs> Good net. All right. All right, my friends. Hey, Pooch. How are you doing here? How are you doing? All right, guys, so we're coming under here to what is usually a bar, and uh, I've turned it into my kitchen here. Um, we're all set up for a nice little lobster breakfast this morning. I've got eggs, bacon, the lobster, butter, spices, and all that, and a uh, little cooking set up here, and a couple of plates for my dad and I. And then over here, I have this part of the grill open. Um, because I'm gonna use that to cook the bacon since that cooks the longest. I actually got this bacon on sale, two for one. Two pounds for the price of one. I was all over that. In fact, I bought four packs. Now, some of you may be thinking, what lobster for breakfast? But folks, I tried it in a members only video. Just just on a whim, I thought, you know, lobster might, I don't know, be a fun breakfast thing might go good with eggs and so i thought i'd give a little experimentation and it turned out it, it's it's amazing as you'll see so bring this over here we'll set it on these flames and i'll just kind of be cooking that pound of bacon while i make everything else so i'm just going to cook two of the lobster tails this morning so i got the tails here and i'm actually going to take the meat out because we're just going to saute it I can't believe how much meat there is in the very tips of the tail. It's amazing. There we go, look at that. <laughs> that is, that's just, oh man, that's so cool. Lobster, spiny Florida lobster, fresh caught. <laughs> Slips right out of there. And then what I'm gonna do is actually cut these up because the butter, I want the butter to really get in there. There we go, two lobster tails sliced up. Let's come over here. How's the bacon looking? Oh, it's looking good. Let me wipe off my hands here. Take some butter, stick it right on there. Mm -hmm. All right, get it all spread out for cooking there. And then I'm gonna add just a smidge. You don't wanna over-season lobster, I've learned. Um, you can't over-season it. See, because the lobster already tastes amazing. So I'm not gonna go too crazy. I'm gonna add a nice, pepper's coming out kind of slowly. Add a nice little bit of pepper to it, but not too much. And then this is popcorn salt, but it's just the same as regular salt. It's just really fine. And I'm going to just add this little sprinkling to it. And that's it, that's all you need for lobster in my opinion i don't i think too many seasonings ruin it so all right so the first round of bacon is pretty much done i need to get some paper towels for this which i will in just a second 
All right, and the lobster looks done. Oh boy, folks, this is coming out real nice here. Real nice. You know, I'm gonna pour some of that extra butter over the top there, and then a little extra butter right over the top there. And then watch this. I'm gonna take the bacon grease that's in here, set this on the edge. I just have one handle. This is my, my uh, camping setup. I'm gonna pour the bacon grease in there for the eggs. Okay, you see what I'm doing there? Bring over the bacon grease, set it right there. There we go. Add the last egg, just like so. See how that pan's not very warm anymore? I have to turn it up. I'm kind of forced to constantly turn it up and down because it's quite breezy out here and the breeze keeps blowing away my heat. So it's one of the challenges of uh, cooking outside, but it's all good. Nice thing about eggs is you don't have to be that precise with them. What I was gonna do is I was gonna use my first cast seasoning, but I don't want that to clash with the, the nice like buttery, bacony eggs and I just didn't want it to clash, so. Oh, eggs are done. Eggs and bacon and lobster. Hey. Hey. I'm just about ready here. Got oh eggs cooked in bacon grease, lobster cooked in butter, and then bacon is a star all by itself. All right, your fork, sir. Oh my goodness, they say. <laughs> lobster breakfast. Oh my. Okay, real yes. Thank you so much, Father in Heaven, for this food, for your loving kindness in providing it richly. And I ask that you would bless it to our bodies now. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. My word. All right, guys, so I did the lobster breakfast on a whim, and it was so amazing. I was like, we, we have to do this again. <laughs> when yeah. you take a bite of egg and a bite of lobster together. Hang on just a second here. I got bite of egg, bite of lobster, bon appetit. Cheers. taste amazing together I can't believe that I mean mm. I know why it's not a thing like at your local diner yeah they because can't. who has lobster but I'm sure at the Bellagio or somewhere yeah like probably that. some real rich place mm -hmm. but and, and then to try to sell it to people at a restaurant be like no lobster and eggs really do go good together <laughs> you know people are like yeah I'm right. not risking that money the, uh, the thing I love about how you've done this again is that you've cooked it I mean, you didn't boil it to death. You know, mm. so many times lobster ends up being like octopus. Mm -hmm. Just rank it, rank it, rank it. You know, just mm -hmm. oh, are you trying some bacon? I'll try some. Mm -hmm. You know, before that, I do that. I'm going to cleanse the palate with orange juice. <laughs> you got orange juice in these fancy plastic glasses. All right. It came with a rental. Mm. This is thick cut bacon. Oh, man. I'm telling you. This what is amazing. This is. I feel rich as Cretius right now. <laughs> Me too. going on guys welcome back to the key largo florida series on this gorgeous warm sunny day my dad and i are taking out the boat rental it is beautiful out right now sunny little sea breeze and uh we are gonna have some fun today lots of animals out so many cool things to see out here we're gonna untie from the dock and be underway the tide is high right now so it's about to go out we will go out with it. Yeah, so what are we going for today, Pops? Mangrove snapper. After eating those the other day, man, that was good stuff. Those were good. Guys, we're going to go into the mangrove. We've got a bunch of uh, live shrimp in there and an artificial. Got a bunch of live shrimp. And uh, we are going to head out to the canals and stuff. See if we get some snapper. We've come into the mangroves, guys, and uh, we're 
just gonna find, we're just gonna run and gun today, just find random spots, anchor up, throw in, like we're kind of at a bend in the, in the canal or whatever you wanna call this here. And so we're just gonna try this spot. All right, guys, I'm just using a simple Carolina rig. I'm just gonna throw a bunch of shrimp today to start off since we're newbies at this. Um, we kinda just keeping it simple. So we've learned down here in the Florida Keys, ladies and gentlemen, everybody uses chum. This is a tournament master chum. I only get the best. Actually, this was the only one they had. Um, it's a big frozen block of ground up fish. My dad's putting on a live shrimp there and I am going to get out this mesh bag. Look at that, you see all the fish parts and fish eyes and stuff like that. Just put that in the bag there. And we just drop that right behind the boat and the water melts it off and creates a nice oil slick and attracts lots of fish. That'll slowly melt for like next three or four hours. All right, first cast of the day. Nice cast. Right on in front of those mangroves there. You missed one already. Very nice. Adam? Yep. Oh, look, I see yep, more falling in. Yeah. You got a little snapper. Oh, first fish of the day. A little uh, undersized, but cool. Pretty yellow all the way around. Mm hmm. That's cool. You never know what you're going to catch in the ocean. I'm going to bounce the chum bag a little bit here. Get that going. Fish on? Wow. I've barely gotten a bite. My dad has his third one. It's a good one? Yeah, he's bigger than the last one. I think we're something on it. Oh, another one of those. I think these are called schoolmaster snapper, guys. That's close to Might a keeper. Be, yeah, they only have to be 10 inches. That's a that's a beautiful fish. Yeah. He's nice. like 11, almost 11. <laughs> nice, Pops. All right, sweet. Okay. Beautiful little fish. Yep. Sweet. We've never eaten this one before, no, guys. No, no, that's a good We're one. eating all kinds of brand look, new fish. Uh, look at that. Look at those teeth in it. Mm. Yep. Nice. Very cool. That was on the canal side. Mm, a little bit yeah. deeper water? Yeah, a little bit yeah. deeper. Fish on? Yeah. Nice. I've not caught one yet. My dad keeps... Oh, it's another one of those yeah, schoolmaster. Yeah, he might keep as well. Oh yeah, I think he is. I think he's a keeper. Let me put... <laughs> nice pops. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Nice. Another about probably 11 inch or so. Yep, there you go. Guys, we have over here, we have a... We've made a little kind of live well spot. So... <laughs> All right, nice pops. Excellent. All right, I gotta catch a fish. You got another fish on. Yeah, I can't even. Guy, it's a little one. I can't even get a hook up here. My dad keeps smoking them. Oh, no, oh no, got no. off. That's, that's the sweet spot. That's the sweet. That's the juice. And you got him that fast. That is nuts. I can't catch <laughs> a darn thing. Another one of those ones, just a little guy, just a little version. All right, this is my time right here. This is my time right, right in front. Right in front. Got him. Oh, I finally got one. <laughs> I let him take it. There you go. Maybe I've been setting the hook too quick. This is a real small one. Yeah. Oh, it's a mangrove though. You got your skunk out of the boat. Yes. This is a mangrove snapper, guys. There we go. All right, let's get a big one now. Fish on, nice. Oh, he just. Oh, I saw. <laughs> oh no, there he goes. Maybe he came back for it. Yeah, maybe he did. Oh, it's a jack, a little jack. We'll take <gasps> that. Let's cut him up for bait. Oh, yeah. oh, guys, check it out. Little jack crawl there. That is fantastic bait. That's some good oily stuff there. I think he's got something else in his mouth. Too. What does he have? Guys, he's got another. What is that? Is that a bug? Wait, one is that is worms? that one of those like uh, yeah, yeah parasites? Guys, oh, 
It is, I think. Oh, it oh, is. Oh, it is. That Poor is little crazy. fellow. He had this parasite. That's the first time I've ever seen this before. I've seen it only in like videos. So we got Ooh. the jack in there. Look at it. Oh, oh, I gotta put that on a bait. Let me see. You're gonna put that on as bait? Will they eat a parasite? Let's see what they'll do. Ugh. That is crazy. It was stuck to the poor guy's tongue. He looks like uh, one of those potato bugs in Idaho. Oh yeah. It'd be kind of ironic to be able to catch a fish. A fish on a parasite. <laughs> fish on. You gotta fish on the parasite. That's so crazy. Another one of those uh, schoolmaster snapper. That one might be a keeper too. That's crazy. We took a parasite out of a fish's mouth, folks, and use it to catch another fish. 10 inches is what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. no, 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 he's short. A little short, but that's cool. I, I just, this mouth is so, Look at that, I mean, it's little teeth. vicious. Think of him getting three and four or five pounds. Uh -huh. That's right. a beautiful fish. Very nice, love those colors. Gosh, it's been really fortunate that I've brought my dad along on these trips because <laughs> he's caught pretty much every keeper that like <laughs> we've kept so far, so. Look at this guy, he's got a pillar right here and uh, a little cove area. Yeah, this, this might be the next spot we anchor. Cool. Dad just chucked the anchor in. Guys, I like this spot. So we've got, you fish the mangroves there, fish the mangroves there, fish that pillar. Cool. All right, shrimp right bombs over there, bombs away. Yes. Got him. Yes. All right, right on that point there, guys. This is fighting kind of cool. This is a snapper, this might be a keeper. Oh, it's a mangrove. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice. Gosh, they fight so hard, I thought it was way bigger than that. Oh man, he's like half an inch sh short, unfortunately. Got him. Got something, yes. It's another mangrove. This one might be keep. I think this is a keeper. I think I got me my first keeper mangrove. Yes, he is. Like 10 and a quarter. We got two kinds of snapper now. Yes, two kinds of snapper. We're gonna turn this guy into a tasty taco. Pardon me. Oh, whoa, we got a whole aquarium starting back there. There we go, guys. Three snappers on the day. Whoa, look at all the fish back here. All right guys, so we've just pulled up the anchor. We're gonna drift right into the back of wherever this goes the current sucking us back there we don't know we don't know what to expect so we're just gonna <laughs> just watch for uh sandbars yeah can't get stuck this is cool explore a new territory guys as we're drifting along there are just thousands of snapper all underneath this these uh mangroves here Guys, I'm gonna flip this kind of as close as I can under there, a little shrimp. See if we get some. It's interesting because they're like different fish down there. They have stripes on their heads. Got him. Nice. A mangrove. I All can right. see him. Oh, he looks like a decent one. Keep him out of oh, this might be a grunt, actually. Yeah, it's a grunt. That's a big grunt, though. Well, not, not massive as far as grunts go, but as far as what we've caught. All right, folks, we're throwing this grunt in there with our snapper for nice fish. Whoa, there's a big fish right here of some sort. 
Was that a big barracuda? Or redfish or something? It's a big one though. Where'd he go? He's, he's like went, took off that way. Or not took off, but he slowly turned. So after a while, we realized that the big fish we were seeing swimming around were snook and they were kind of skittish. So we anchored on the other side and started to cast into the deeper part because they were hanging out by the mangroves and this boat <laughs> comes by and with no apology, no sheepishness, just rolls right on through. And uh, you know, it wasn't a terrible thing, but he could have at least, I don't know, gone around <laughs> or something. Well, the fishing will be ruined. Fishing's done for a little bit. We decided to stay there because it was one of the few spots we actually saw a snook. And you see one right there swimming up around the sandbar. Most of them hung out in the shade, but that one came up and kind of swam around this sandbar. And so we just kept fishing for those. Got him. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Sweet. Let's see what it is. It's a snapper. It's another keeper. Another keeper mangrove snapper. Sweet. Measure him just to make sure. Oh, yeah. He's like, this might be the biggest one of the day. He's 11 and a half inches. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Throw them in there with all the other snapper. Nice. Sweet. Ah, kind of died here. Yeah, yeah. Well, should we move on? I think we should. Let's go explore another spot. See what it's like? There is a bend up here where, you know, it has the way. Yeah, but let's just, we'll take a look, okay? We're gonna go in the back of this, um, oh, this little inlet here. It's very clear. Might fish around here. Oh, look, look, there's a hammerhead right there. A little baby hammerhead. All right, my friends, in the hopes of catching a little shark, we got a nice little piece of cut bait on there. We're going to throw that down, and I'm going to get to cooking. Interesting. We got everything for cooking right in here folks yes 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 all right my friends who's ready for dinner <laughs> you're sick <laughs> fish on i was just about ready to start playing what do you have oh he just got off dang it it's gonna be fun guys to try some brand new fish <laughs> Me too. <sighs> Last fillet. Oh. Look at him roll. Look at that. He just rolled. He rolled? Yep. Oh, that's cool. An acrobatic plane. Wow. I love airplanes. All right, my friends. There is... The dish of filets. Pops, do you need this for anything? Yeah, hang on. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. You might use something. All right. I am going to rinse off the cutting board, guys, just to add that little bit of a scent in the water. We're still hoping to get a little shark or something. All right. Check it out, guys. Key lime fish fry. It's Florida seafood seasoning. I'm gonna use this. I used this last time we were out here, and it was really delicious. And it's some of the best smelling seafood seasoning I, I swear I've ever smelt before. So we're just gonna fry the fish. This is a little bit of salt and pepper, by the way. We're just gonna fry the fish and then put it in tacos kind of keep it a little bit simple out here I brought this little like plastic thing because I put the fillets in there and then I can just kind of shake it like that and uh, bread them up real good makes it a little bit simpler out on the boat I have to try to figure out little shortcuts whenever you're cooking out on a boat 
<laughs> oh, the shark is down there? Oh, I got it. There's a big shark? A big shark? Down here, do you see him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, some big sharks. Gotta get back to my cooking here. Oh, we got some well done pieces. Got distracted by sharks, but those still should be good. Oh, that is so cool, guys. There's so many cool things to, to do and see out here. Let's get these tortillas out. I'm gonna kind of put these tortillas on top. Just let them just kind of steam a little bit because steam pours out of that side. Just to warm them up. Just a smidge. Oh, excellent, that steam pouring out of the side there has heated them up and uh, I think we have some done fish fillets here folks excellent perfect perfect this is cool this is really cool we're still holding out hope that we can get a shark too all right guys we got some nice lettuce here and uh, we're keeping these tacos on the simple side but they will be absolutely delicious and I got here some new fish taco sauce from Louisiana Fish Fry Products, which I love. I love the almost everything they make. So I've never tried their fish taco sauce though, so I thought now it'd be I've never even seen this actually until I came down here to Florida. So cut this into chunks. Stick the fried chunks right on there. I'm trying to get pieces with no bones. There are a couple of pin bones in these, so. Alright, Pops. The first fish tacos. You've got them ready. Already. Oh Just lettuce, fish taco sauce, and the fish. Oh you can hold the plate if you oh want. Man, that yeah. looks delicious. <laughs> no kidding. Wow. Fresh from the ocean. Cheers. Cheers. You know oh, what? we had a prey real quick. <laughs> Hmm. Now, let me take my head I, I tell you, I'm getting chewed up. Yeah, there are like all these little like no see oh, um, mosquitoes or something out here. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the bounty we get to enjoy now. Thank you for providing it richly from the ocean. And I pray, pray you bless it to our bodies in Christ's name. Amen. amen. It was very pleasant out here until all the no the little mosquitoes or whatever yeah. are coming out. Little bugs yeah, might Yeah, definitely. All right. And cheers. Cheers to you, sir. Mm. Oh man, that lettuce, mm. everything. Fresh, crunchy lettuce, and then the crunchy. cacao of the sauce. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And the crispy fish. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Guys, we're making a U-turn. Check this out. I'll grab it. There we go. Oh, oh, I just missed it. Dang it. It got away. Check it out, guys. Ah, oh, a coconut. Yes. Huh? Still has water within. We'll see if it's good. First catch of the day. Put them in there, in the coconut well. coconut live well. Guys, look at that resort spot. That is pretty sweet. It's like a restaurant and, oh, look. Yeah, we could eat there later if we wanted to. A little lunch. This side is cool too. Look at that big hotel there, guys. Wow. So, can we fish? He said the bridge is a good fishing spot. You see those rocks over there? So maybe we go and we like we'll anchor around. around yeah, look, look how it opens up. Let's let's uh, poke around back here. Guys, this is a cool part about. Oh yeah, th there have to be all kinds of fish around the pilings there. Good. Sweet, my friends. Nice, guys. Brand new fishing spot under this big bridge. Cool. All right, folks. We have here some. 
frozen shrimp or thawed out. I guess they're more like refrigerated shrimp. They were fresh when we got them. There we go, a little piece of shrimp. Fish it right on those pilings there. You throwing on some shrimp too? Got him. Got something. Oh, he got me snagged for a second, and now he's out. Nope, he got away. He got me snagged, dang it. Little booger. Mm-hmm. Let's flip it right back down there, guys. That's right where I saw fish chasing a bunch of minnows. Oh, I oh, hello, I have a circle hook. I'm setting the hook like it's bass, and I've got a circle hook on. Right in there, Pops, if you want to see if you can pull them up. My dad's fishing in the corner, guys. I've switched to this little, like, jig head. And uh, just so my shrimp falls like slowly down to the bottom, I'm hoping like maybe I have a better chance at a uh, sheep's head or snook or something like that. Got him. A mangrove snapper. There's something different. Look at him. He wants it. No, no. Hey, 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 hey. No. What the? These pelicans are bold. Little mangrove snapper there, though, guys. Something different on the uh, jig head. These are called snapper jig heads, I think. He's coming on the other side of the boat. Look at him. He made it. <laughs> that pelican. Did he get it? No. Got him. Fish on. Oh, it's a big grunt. Yeah, something bigger. A little bit. It's a grunt. It's just a different type. Hey you, no. Get away from my grunt. Come on, it's just like one little piece is kind of there. Look at he thinks he's gonna feed him, nope. Oh, that pelican actually got him. That grunt, like I thought the grunt was gone and that pelican reached way down, look at he's trying to swallow him. He got him. Swallowed him whole, that has to be uncomfortable for the pelicans to have a live fish. Think of how that feels for the fish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Hey, hey, let go, let go of the fish. You big goomba. He just ate your fish. You... Watch your bait. He's gonna get your bait too. I got him hooked. He... Get a glove on, maybe. Y'all get some gloves. Stupid bird. Jeez. I have a feeling you might just be refusing to let it go because they're that ornery. You big goomba. Let it go. You want to pull it out there, Pops? Yep. Oh, look, it is hooked a little bit. Okay. Um, there we go. There you go. That may teach you a lesson, I hope. Look at it. You got coming right over like that. Huh. Yep. Uh, look at him. What the? Hey. Get away. You want? You want to fight? You want to fight? Little piece of me. Hey, get out of here, you big goofy bird! I got one. Look at him! Look at him! Trying to come over again. Grunt. Hey, what are you? Boy, this guy is bold as brass. Hey, go get it! Yeah. 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 Got a good one? Oh, shh. Did he break it? Oh, dang. Yeah, I thought around this structure, I know we're getting a lot of little ones, but it have to be some sheep's head and yeah. some different, all those fish. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Look at his foot is now tangled up in my line. You big goomba. You big. You got something? I almost caught a bird. What was it? <gasps> what was that? Was that a crab or a lobster? What was that? Did you see it? Uh uh. It was big, whatever it was. Dang. You got my Guys, my dad's got something yeah, big. Yeah, right down, down there. That's it. That's it. Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to no, go right no, in your no, spot. No, 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 no. I'm going to go in the piling right beside you. Oh, shoot. Was was it brown? It was, it was yeah, yeah. That's I, I think it was. Was it a flounder? Oh, maybe. The tiny little glance that I had it reminded me yeah, of a yeah, flounder. Yeah. It was round, definitely. Got him. Good fish. Good fish. Heavy fish. 
big sheep's big. head. Oh, it's a big one. Do I need to get It's the, a big uh, one. Let me get my gloves. Oh, it's a big one. I'm gonna reel mine in. Just hold on a second. Oh, it's a big one. This is my personal best. Hey, you, you better not get my sheep's head. Hey, Gavin. Gavin? Oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> Just keep her. Oh, oh. Okay, I'm not. All right, gonna we're not gonna gaff. Yeah. Just grab him. Ouch. Uh. Uh. Whoa. Whoa. Look at that. Uh. Thank you for landing nice. him. Didn't know what to do there, guys. Wow, that is my personal best sheep's head by far. Wow, Asa. That is a good. That is so. Some good eating. Uh huh. Man. That nice is. Job. Thank you for grabbing him and taking care of that oh. dumb bird. Yeah. Woo. That is a pancake, guys. Oh man. Wow. We we could we had some on earlier. It's off the hook. Yes. I'm gonna hold that in. Oh, a little over 19, nice. like 19 and a half inches, nice almost a job. 20 inch sheep's head. Very nice. In the hole of our boat here, guys, we put a bunch of ice, put him right on there, and uh, dispatch him. He, oh, he did get yeah, you. Yeah, I've been rinsing it off. So. Um, well, thank you for beating off the and bird with a yeah, gaff. That yeah, was it. Like, like he was going to try yeah. to grab the whole Yeah, look, they're hanging out away from the boat now. Yeah. yeah. Try to grab a 19 and a half inch fish. Yeah. Every time I set the hook now, I expect yeah. a big... Look, no pelicans. Amazing what a little discipline does. <laughs> Hold on, we got this brownie down. This is a little mangrove snapper. Now, guys, if we had some snapper... Oh, he grabbed my shrimp. Give me that back. If we had some um, snapper with a sheep's head, that would be real nice, too. Got him. Um, oh, it's a little... Dang. Look at this bird. This is unreal. This is... Yeah. A little Weisenheimer. You know what? Maybe I'm kind of curious what's back there too. I wonder if like we just put on the motor and we just see we could fish around the stand just for our last few pieces of bait. Guys, we're going to go back wherever this bridge leads. We're just going to fish around the pilings. See if we can get something. Sure, I'm just going to stop it right here. Let's see where the current takes us. Interesting, guys. Look at this. Huh. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, that's really cool. Guys, there's a big uh, iguana in the tree right there. They want people to remove iguanas because species. they eat all flowers and bird nests and bird eggs. And uh, this is my first time ever fishing for an iguana. Let's see what he thinks. If he grabs it, I'm totally jerking him out of that tree. <laughs> and uh, we're going to eat him. <laughs> You're going to get a smell of that thing here in a minute. I'm going to let it just like sit there. Dang it. Look at him. I'm going to knock him off the tree and try to... <laughs> I so wanted to catch an iguana. Look at him. He's freaked out. Ah, oh, we need a pellet gun. That is such a cool creature. What's up, buddy? What's up? What's up? Having a good day so far? Hey, no, come back. There he goes. Shoot. That would have been cool, too. Catching, cook, cooking iguana. But it's like deeper right there. That's interesting. All right, I'm gonna stop it right here. There we go, guys. We're gonna fish the upper end of this. Three shrimp left. Let's do it. Got him? Good one? Oh, that might be Keeper Mangrove. 
Oh, yes! Maybe. Oh, he's gonna be so close. Guys, mangrove have to be 10 inches. Oh, he's a 10 inch. I thought they had a good foot. Shoot ya. Yeah. Shoot ya. Yeah. Nice last minute catch. Oh yeah, he's like 11. Woo, no. All right, my friends, nice. we got we love mangrove snapper. Oh, wow, yes, we, we had it for the first time the other day. It was delish. Throw him in the ice box. Yes, sir. Look at nice. that. He's, he's, he's wanting to get away on me. So All right. Nice. Throw him in the ice box. Nice. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I'll knock him out in a second. Oh, guys, look at that big old sheep's head. We also caught that uh, little guy off camera, the little jack. All right. Yes. These guys just follow us everywhere. I got something. A grunt. Another grunt. Look at these birds. What do you think you're doing? What do you think? What do you think you're doing? Really? Am I gonna have to, am I gonna have to get the gaff and and deal some spankings here? I have to beat some pelicans about the head. Um, this is for your own good, okay? There. <laughs> Chucked him over the piling. Got him. Oh, it's a little mangrove. Look at him. Oh my goodness. They almost got this little guy. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> He's spinning between two deaths. Death by humans or death by pelican. Time to hang it up, guys. I'll that. Here a uh, oh, you have one more piece. Okay. One more, one more Look at all. These guys are just relentless. Just relentless. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it was a good time out here. Unless my dad catches something on this last little bit of bait, we are completely out. Oh, that was a. F he broke me off. Did he? Oh no, there it is. Oh man, that was. Man. That seemed like a good one though. Shoot. The one that got that away. Last piece of bait, here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir. Well, that was fun, Pops. Exactly. We're going to get back to the condo, cook up some sheep's head. Guys, this, uh, this houseboat here, we just talked to these folks. They said they came here to Key Largo from Texas. They've been traveling around in that. I think he said it was kind of hard to hear him. I think he said since October. Yeah. So like four months living on a, on a houseboat that traveling around in the Caribbean. That is so cool. All right, guys, we are back at the marina here. It's turned off to be quite a pretty evening here. Some fish in the cooler and a snapper who still has the bait in his mouth. As we come here to the end of the marina, we have a nice little fish cleaning station here. Please poke the eyes before disposing of fish carcass. And the reason why they want you to do that, folks, is because fish eyes have pockets of air in them. And if you don't poke them, they will float on the surface and the pelicans will get them. Or if the pelicans don't get them for whatever reason, then you just have a bunch of dead fish floating around out in the harbor and they don't, uh, they don't want that. I'm going to use this big butcher knife that my brother got me because it's so cool and it's very, very sharp. I think I can use it on a fish this big. Let's see here. To chop through those rib bones. That's what this is real nice for. Um, if you're if you're new to the fishing cooking world, and it may be different different parts of the country, but we call it cooking it on the half shell. It's just kind of a there's no shell, but you're kind of a nickname for cooking a f fish filet whole on the grill. So what I do is I do that, we'll clean it off, but I'm gonna leave the skin and scales on. Let's spray it off real quick. Unfortunately, this was a female sheep's head, but it has something in the stomach. Oh, look at that, a bunch of shrimp. A bunch of shrimp, like, like I know we were, well, unless, I know we were using shrimp, but this is more than we were using, unless, <laughs> Unless this sheep's head stole, stole that much of it from us. You know, that sheep's head may have, that may be all bait from us. <laughs> That's funny to think. Oh, look, and here's something hard, like a part of a crab shell or something. I also had people telling me that, like, 
They're discovering that the throats are really good of things, so I'm gonna cut out the throat of the sheep's head. We'll try. We'll try that as well. I'm gonna take this carcass and we are saving this one for chum or crab trap or something, because that's just too big of a carcass not to. So this is something I think is very interesting, folks. I cut open the Jack Creval and I cut off this little filet because I thought, let's try a piece of it of the so-called trash fish. But one thing I do see is the reason why these guys are such good bait, look at all of the blood that came out of that. So, I mean, that's why you, fantastic hey, bait. Pretty good, I caught, well, you know, I caught my personal best sheep's head. So I was really happy with that. Great. Yes. How'd you guys do? <laughs> he said, we got to order a pizza. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, see, all these birds are disappointed because I didn't throw anything to them. All right, my friends, back at the rental. And uh, we have this little, like, uh, patio porch area here, uh, which is nice. I'm going to prepare the fish here but there's no grill there's actually a grill over by the swimming pool but i'm going to use this little table here to uh, prepare the fish so i have here some pineapple teriyaki glaze good for as a marinade and grilling and some of my first cast seasoning we're going to try cooking this fish in two ways i'm going to pour a little bit of this out in the bottom of the plate since i've never really tried marinating a fish before grilling it we're just going to do one side this way because I don't know if this is going to turn out real well. <laughs> and I don't know if teriyaki glaze looks good. I don't know if teriyaki glaze is exactly going to be, you know, good on a fish. But uh, that's the point of my channel is to try new things. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually just going to leave it set in there for 15 minutes so it soaks up some of that uh, marinade. You know, I just thought of this. I'm also going to just like cut like a slit in the meat like that. In fact, I'm going to make a couple. And then I'm going to put some butter. You know, let's just, the butter's kind of hard. I'll kind of push it down in there. Push it down. You know, just leave kind of a daub on top and a daub right there. And this is going to melt and just get all in that meat there. That should be scrumptious. All right, so I'll let those sit for a few minutes. While we're doing that, I need to figure out how to get into this coconut. I have a machete here. I know that cutting into it, I will definitely need the machete, but I need some big rocks. Oh, I'm really, I am really, really hoping this coconut tastes good. It might be rotten inside. It's about 50-50, I've learned, with coconuts that you find. All right, so at this rental property, they have this little uh, artificial beach here cool little spot. I have a bunch of big rocks right here. I'm gonna set them right there. Grab this big rock here. There we go. I feel like that. We, we made progress there. Oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's a beautiful... You know, a quick smell test and I don't... It doesn't smell rotten, folks. It does not smell rotten. There, look at that folks. Is it good? Oh, what is that? It smells good. Folks, I got a good coconut. I got a good coconut. Look at that, it's beautiful. Yes, success. Ah, it's kind of nice because I have the whole beach to myself. It's probably like 65 degrees out here right now. And uh, most of the people, when it's 65 degrees, they just don't want to be out here, I guess. I think it's great. It's better than where I come from in the mountains, temperature-wise. Oh, it's good. It's so good. I love how thick this coconut is too. Oh, there's so much meat on that sucker. Right, let's go back to the fish. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there are grills throughout this property. The one that I wanted to go to had people all around it. So I came to this one here. This will do fine. There we go. There we go. Got it all 
start it up there excellent excellent let's preheat that to about i don't know oh i want to say 300 degrees but it says 300 degrees i know it's not it must be broken all right so the temperature gauge says we're almost at 600 degrees in here now let's take this set it right on there nice we'll lay that right there some of these fillets up here and the throat of the sheep's head and the one fillet of Jack Creval and then one of the snapper fillets marinated in that. These will cook a lot faster. Oh look at that buttermilk. It's already looking pretty good here. Oh that looks done. They're curling which is interesting. Oh look, look at how the scales are burnt on the bottom. That's, you know, that's why we leave on the hash. I'll see that um, the meat is not burned, but the scales under both of them are. And since we are in the keys, I'm going to take a uh, lime here, folks. And I'm gonna squeeze some over. I'm not gonna do it over the teriyaki pineapple. I don't, I think that that would clash, but I am gonna squeeze it over the fish with my first cast seasoning. It's usually lemon and lime go very well with my first cast seasoning. Link in the description. All right, my friends, my dad has joined me here. How is the coconut? What is that? I can't believe that. I can't believe you found it in the water perfectly good, like. You were the one like, that saw it. Perfectly ripe coconut. Mm, sweet lamb. Is, mm. Mm. Well, here's what we got. Yeah. We got um, teriyaki pineapple glazed fish. I let it marinate on one filet and then I just have my first cast seasoning salt and pepper and lime oh, wow. on these other ones I didn't know how it would taste and this is that little snapper that you caught the little mangrove okay to try one of each side okay? sounds good to see which one we like better right. right. pray real quick you bet. dear God thank you so much for uh, all the variety of creation you, you've given us to enjoy and uh, I see blesses food to our bodies now through Jesus I pray amen amen wow alright sheep's head that's a meaty fish there that is friend. meaty Yes, indeed. Wow, it's like interesting. That's an interesting. It didn't sure. peel, no. you know, flake right away. Mm -hmm. I love the texture. Mm hmm. That teriyaki marinade is pretty good. Mm hmm. That's actually good, guys. Teriyaki marinade on a fish, I think. Well, I'm going to try this oh. next. Mm. Wow. Guys, there's nothing wrong with that. With a little. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, I love how you've got the, these bones come out. That's so cool. That really looks <laughs> neat. I got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is just, I thought maybe it was the marinade, yeah. but no, both sides are uh, shears. Mm. It's just a little on the chewy side, a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, it is. And it's good. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. a hearty fish. Mm -hmm. Which one well, do you like better? I think I like this one better myself mm -hmm. with the seasoning. I'm kind of favoring that. Too. I like I like my first cast seasoning on sheep's head, folks. No, we have to try this because yeah. this is the. That's the snapper. No, no. That, oh. Let's try. We know the snapper's good. All right. Let's try the Jack Creval. I just did oh, one oh, side nice. of it. Okay. Heck yeah. Supposedly a trash fish. Mm -hmm. Let's see. You grab that off. Jack Creval. Supposedly a trash fish. Is it nasty or is it good? No, it's good. <laughs> it is good. I don't understand why people call them trash fish. Like that's perfectly fine. I'm not sure why they have that reputation around here. Yeah. Maybe the really big ones, because that was a young, tender one. Yeah, maybe that's it. I don't know, guys. Jack Creval, tasty to me. Oh, I see. All, oh, man, there are a whole bunch of fish. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we would be one of the first ones here. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Florida series. My dad and I just arrived at a new spot, a fishing pier. We thought we were going to be the first ones here this morning, because we're here about... 40 minutes before low tide and turns out all these other fishermen are already here so oh really oh thank you hey what's your name tj tj sweet yeah. are you fishing off the pier yeah oh sweet sweet yeah, what's you going after today you know i'm new this is my first time to florida so i have no really? idea we're just gonna throw lines out and oh man cool yeah. you might guys mind being in a video 
No, I don't care, man. And TJ. All right. What's, What's your name? Up? Jacob. Jacob. Nice to meet you, Jacob. Nice to meet you too. How are you? Good. Good. We're gonna try the balloon method, right? See if we get a shark. Balloon? Oh, it's a shark? Oh, sweet. Yeah, I'll I'll film that if you guys don't mind. That'd be really cool to see. I don't know anything about this kind of fishing yeah, very we, much. We try our best. We're locals around here. But we try our best. I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I watch this guy's videos like on the daily. I watch your catch and cooks all the time. Oh, really? Oh, thank you. All right, guys. So this is a subscriber, TJ and Jacob. Jacob. TJ and Jacob. So. uh They'll, they're gonna, we'll see what they do, which is, this is really good, because I just plan on throwing a few shrimp off the pier, and they've got a serious setup right here, so. This spot, yeah. too, if you come here at night, we have this little, like, battery. You drop a snook bite down in there. Oh, yeah. And there's tons of redfish and snook that roam right through here at night, and they're just monsters. Oh, that's cool. You guys, look at the moon there. That's cool. It's like, I think it's full moon tomorrow morning, actually, or tomorrow. Yeah. Um, like check out this fishing pier. The tide is going out at the moment, but it's gonna switch in about 40 minutes. And we wanna be ready for that. Oh, it's gorgeous out here, folks. We've got a bunch of people already setting up for fishing. A little windy out here, but uh, that's all right. That you know, usually isn't too bad for the fishing. All right, guys. Check it out. We got a whole bunch of live shrimp in there. Grab a nice medium sized one. Just gonna hook him. <laughs> Just gonna hook him right behind the horn, just like that. Let's drop him down. All right, guys, so. Here's the deal. It's kind of slow. Here's my banana. Don't tell Asa. Um, it's kind of slow fishing right now. We're waiting for that tide to turn. So I am going to throw a cast net and uh, see what I can come up with here. See if I can get add a few bait fish. The egrets already agree that this would be a good time and place to catch some bait fish, it looks like. They're already here looking around. For those of you who don't know, um, when my wife and I, Ace's mom, when we first got married, we lived in uh, Pensacola, Florida. I was in the Marine Corps. And I had a Hawaiian man teach me how to throw a cast net. So um, it's a lot of fun if you've never done it. A little bit of a learning curve, but I'm sure YouTube has all kinds of videos now to show people how to do it. I should be able to just toss it out there and get a little something let's see what happens here the fun thing about throwing a cast net it's just like fishing you just never know oh look at there we got some we got some let's see here yeah we got some shiners there or whatever those are cool I think that's about <laughs> unless I just want to go for fun that's about all I need right there all right so we're putting our net away I'm gonna grab my banana out, have a little banana to eat. Now, the thing about eating a banana when you're fishing is, you don't wanna be around other fishermen when you're eating a banana. So, uh, I'm just gonna stay off over here, kick back a little bit, and uh, <laughs> have my banana in solitude so I don't get thrown over the edge of the pier. Here he is. Did you do pretty good? Really? Nice, thank you. I, I had a good bite on shrimp. Something stole my shrimp off just way out there. Oh, nice. I'm getting hit. Got one, guys. Got one. First fish of the day. All right. On a, pea, on a shrimp, a whole live shrimp. I'm going to go around you real quick. Yeah, I got a fish in. The easier it's going to pop. Oh, it's a lizard fish. Yeah, but that's a good snook bait. <laughs> is it a good? If you guys want to use it for bait, All right, guys, this is a little lizard fish, kind of a useless fish, except as bait. You guys want a lizard fish as bait by chance? Yeah, sure. I'll keep going. Still yeah. right up there. That's good. Appreciate you, man. You're welcome. Now, if you, I've seen you using some massive baits. Yeah, if you I get mean, just lady fish. 
ladyfish. Yeah. Now, if you get some on that, do you mind being in a YouTube video? I actually make YouTube videos for a living. I have over a million subscribers. Oh, yeah. I'd love to include whatever you catch on that, oh, in it, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, like I say, if you hook up on something, that would be sweet. I'd love to get that on camera. Yeah, for sure, man. Appreciate you. Oh. Oh, he's got something. They want to use your net. All right, guys. This guy's hooked up over here. Oh, you got a huge... Dude, was that on the fish I gave you? Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Guys, Guys, you got a big snook. Oh, that is sweet. There we go. Look. Nice. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, yeah. Woo. Look at that. Stud. Dude, that is, giant. That is fantastic. That's awesome, that is awesome. Oh, man. Nice catch. <laughs> that is sweet. This thing got piped so fast. Dude. It's a fat. Dude, that is a sweet catch right there. Stud. <laughs> nice. Is it fork length or is it? Uh, no, it's right to the tail, right to the tail. Straight to the tail. Tail. So 32. About 32. 32. Nice. <laughs> what an epic fish, man. Yes, what an epic fish. This thing's a stud. Folks, that was satisfying to uh, give that guy that fish and like five minutes later he catches a huge snook on it. Guys, I'm getting a bite. I got something. I got something. Oh, he, he broke off. He broke off on the dock. Son of a dog. He took the he took the green back. Dude. Oh man. Son of a gun. Learning uh, You know I need to tighten my drag just slightly. Alright guys, retied. I'm the newbie out here, so I'm trying to figure this out. And I gotta get him out of the pier. Next time I hook up a fish like that. So there's a piece of bait. We're going to get it right back down there. That was just right below. Right below, right here. Oh, guys, I'm getting bit already. I'm getting bit. Got him. Got him. Yep. Oh, it's a jack. It's just a jack. Cool, though. All right. Got some action. You know what? Oh, I hear him grunting. You know, I'm gonna eat them. Um, CJ just said, he said, everybody says these are trash fish, but he said, I know a lot of people that eat them. Yeah. So guys, in Hawaii, there's a very similar fish called an ulua, and they look a lot like this. So it's weird to us, like the bluefin trevally are the most sought after fish in Hawaii. Um, they're, they're like the snook of, of Florida. And so it's really weird to see a fish just almost just like them that people say are trash fish. All right, guys, we're gonna try eat one of these for the first time. What's your personal best snook? 40. 40? Oh, that's... Yeah, just like on the dot. I caught it on a, a blind. A blind? Yeah, on the beach. That's cool. All right, guys. TJ's hooked up here on something. Nice little Spanish mackerel. Spanish mackerel. Sweet. Woo. You guys gonna... What are you gonna do with them? Uh, that's cool. If anybody wants them, they can have them. Can, want um, them I want to try yeah. eating one. Go ahead. If that's all right with you. Look at the teeth on that dude, guys. Guys, sweet. That? That's is a that? beautiful little fish. Jack, sweet. We're gonna cook up a little something. In fact, if you guys want to be around for that cook part, yeah. we're gonna. How long are you gonna be out here? Just for a couple hours, and we'll, then I'm actually probably gonna cook them up like right on the beach. Yeah, I'm down. The tide's turning, so maybe, maybe. All right, guys, check out this setup Jacob has here. He's got this Jack Traval in there on a circle hook. Great big sinker, and that balloon carries it on the wind, carries it way out there. And you guys are hoping for a shark? Yep. Shark. Oh, that'd be cool if you hooked up. Hopefully, hopefully soon here. The tide has just turned in our favor. It's just starting to really fill up with people. You got one? Come on, Jim. Oh, another jack. The bigger one. Cool. Got another one coming up over there. We got some folks over here. Guys, it's just a party out here. 
Oh, that guy's got a, is that a huge sheep's head? Oh my goodness, that's a, that is a big sheep's head. I gotta look at that. <laughs> oh, oh, look at the side there. Holy oh, hell, oh, hell yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Hold on, let me get my, my ruler. Yeah. That is fantastic. No wonder you regret it, <laughs> Congratulations, sir. Yeah. Ooh, that's a nice one. <laughs> that's a nice one. That's a beauty, Jimmy. Got that, Jim? Yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Almost 20. 19 and three quarters. Nice. Wow. Right. That's a big boy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Fatty Patty. Look at those teeth on that guy. Fantastic. Do you need any help with it or you want me to hold him down while you get out the hook or anything like that? Are you good? Oh yeah, just barely. Oh, never mind. That came right out. I thought I swallowed it. Wow! Congratulations. It's a party out here, folks. There you go. And the fishing is good. We're out of here. You want our bait? It's just a bunch of shrimp. Oh We've sure. Got a couple dozen in there. So. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Appreciate that. Hey, appreciate that, man. Yes, sir. What was your name? Spencer. Spencer. Nice to meet you, Spencer. Nice yeah. to meet you, man. And you'll see the video probably three to four weeks. Awesome. It'll be up on my channel. For sure. And uh, the Florida series will start being posted and just, yeah, probably like fishing yeah, from I'll a pier. comment on there for sure, dude. Hey, sounds good. Awesome. Oh, oh. Oh. Whoa. Oh, guys, my dad has one on his rod. He went to go throw the cast net. And he left his line out there with the shrimp and uh, hooked up on something on the shrimp. What is that? A grunt, huh? Yep. Are they good to eat? Uh, I've never heard of it, but you know, there's always a first time for There is. Oh, oh, well, that takes care of that. Oh, the birds almost ate him, guys. <laughs> almost ate him on the way down. Oh, oh, TJ. Where's, oh, TJ, uh -oh. uh oh, we got something. <laughs> Want me to, it's what? Hey, you hooked up, man. <laughs> Walk away for one second. This is funny. What do we got? Oh, nice oh, 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 look, the, guess the birds are trying to eat. <laughs> Oh, nice. Oh, oh, the, the birds are trying to eat. <laughs> Woo. I'm sorry. That was wild. <laughs> ladyfish. That's, That's a big ladyfish. <laughs> Woo that was funny. Yeah, man. Nice to catch, dude. Yeah, he saved every single one, dude. He's been saved my pole every time. Oh, every time I walk away to go do something, I get a bite and he saved it. Nice. Look at that. Guys, these birds just chill around the pier and they'll try to steal your fish as you're pulling it up. Nice meeting you. Yeah, nice meeting you too, you TJ. Yeah, thanks for watching my channel. Okay. Jacob, it was great meeting you. Didn't meet you too. Let's all get a picture. I'll get a picture, sound good. What if that's a sightseeing tour? They're waving. That'd be cool. <laughs> oh. Got him. Got him. Nice. Guys, I got one. I got one on the uh, the greenback shiner, shiner. Yeah. yeah. All right, way out there. Oh, it's a jack. Okay. <laughs> cool, though. Oh, the bird came over. I wonder if the bird would eat a live jack as it fell back down. Anybody need any bait? Anybody need any bait? On the floor. Did you want him alive? Hey, did you want him alive? Uh, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'll just knock him out so he doesn't flop away. Doesn't matter, man. What do you got? 
Oh, Spanish yeah. mackerel. Nice. Very nice. You got People been catching fish. Uh huh. It's a skinny little thing, but they're good. Yeah, you know, yeah. we'll throw them. I'll throw them yeah, in the. That is teeth. Uh huh. <laughs> that is nuts. Cool. All right, add him to the kitty. <laughs> Guys, we're about to start cooking up. I, I told my dad. I'm gonna, I found some picnic tables for us. There we go. Cook everything up. All right, guys, they have these nice fish cleaning stations right here on the pier with water and everything. All right, my friends, this will be the first time catching and cooking a Spanish mackerel for me. Where the skin is super soft and like easy to cut through. Let's try Jack Croval here. This will be interesting. This is supposedly a trash fish, but I want to try it myself. Okay, so the Jack, it, it totally looks like a normal fillet to me. I know I see no reason why this wouldn't be good. All right, my friends, we have moved away from the crowds and found this little shady picnic table here. And I've got a beautiful beach view right over there. This place is gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna hike down to the beach while Ace is cooking, guys. And uh, I don't know, I'm hoping maybe get a flounder or a blue crab, I don't know what, but I'm gonna go out here and give it a whirl and see what happens. So let's see where, what we can come up with. Looks like some old pilings out there. You never know, it might be some flounder, shrimp, all kinds of stuff around there. We'll just have to check it out. Oh yeah, we got, we got them. Cool, a lot of fish. Any shrimp? No shrimp, just fish. All right, let's see if we can get a bite out here. Pretty rough out here. Might be better to use some kind of jerk bait or something. I don't know. Fish on. Oh, he's a good one. He's a jumper. He's a jumper. Get him off the stuff there. Oh, this is cool. Oh, it's a big snook, I think. <laughs> it's a big old snook. On that greenback. How cool. Come to Papa. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's a fighter. Yeah. Gotta go show my son. I gotta release him, but. He's making a video. Yeah, he's they're out of season right now. It's a snook. Hey, Asa. Asa. <laughs> How's that? That is amazing. 
That's a good looking snook, isn't it? That's a good looking snook. Would you mind taking that hook out? I gotta let him go, but that was fun. That is so cool. Yeah, thank you. Sweet. Nice. Wow. <laughs> what a time. What a morning of fishing. And... Go. Guys, they're out of season right now, so we can't okay. keep this guy. But what a cool catch. There he goes. There he goes. Pops. Nice job. Oh. Woo! Let's eat. Yes. Woo. Feels good to sit down in the oh, shade. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Should we pray real quick? Yes, indeed. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the wonderful creation we got to enjoy today, and thank you for the variety of it, and thank you for this food that you provided with us now. Through Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. All right. So we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna do Spanish mackerel first. Do, yeah, let's do Spanish mackerel, and then guys, we'll try the Jack Creval to see if it really yeah. is a trash fish. Yeah. There you go. All right. First, the Spanish. I like the sauce. I can I can taste more sauce than fish. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna eat just the fish. Just on the this fish. Mm -hmm. Spanish mackerel. It's a little tiny bit on like a, a mushy texture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a bit. That's good fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really good fish. Now we gotta try. Well, let me. Oh, okay. Once you're done, we're gonna try the Jack mm -hmm. Revolve, the supposed trash fish. No. All right. Oh, cheers. It's not bad. I mean, I no. Nothing, bad, nothing wrong with that. No. I, I mean, I, I'd eat it. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's not as flavorful right, as, as a Spanish a, mackerel. Right, right. So I, I see that, but it's definitely not trash fish. No. It's not bad. like a carp. <laughs> mm -mm. No, not like a carp. In fact, you put a little buffalo wild wing sauce on it. Mm -hmm. You're right in business. Hey, man. This is good. Mm -hmm. I ain't throwing those back. Wow. I know, guys are using them for shark bait, using them for anything else, buddy. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're good. What a day. What a day. You guys, I think we're going to chow down on all this fish. Thank you guys for hanging out. Mm, really? We'll see you in the next one.